What's up, what's up, what's up? Welcome to your new favorite podcast, The Ain't Shit Show, the home of booze views and unpopular opinions. Thank you for joining us for episode 65. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all know me. My name is Fresh, and I'm one half of the pod gods. And with me, I have the best man in all the podcast land, my right-hand man, Mr. B. Hill. Yeah, hey, what up? What up? What up? What's going on, party people? <sighs> What's up, my friend? What's popping with you? Your nose. I know, right? <laughs> Near snot bubbles. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> so... I want to po- apologize in advance, but not apologize at the same time because I feel like shit. Uh, I went it's called to dedication. Mardi Gras this weekend, uh, but she had her titties out getting getting beads. Got a, <laughs> got a chest cold. I had mad beads, so I had to show mad boobs. Y'all know I'm not showing no boobs. Y'all know me enough for that. Prude. But uh, <laughs> did you show your titties? I I didn't go to Mardi Gras. Oh, all right. Well, next time you go, show those man boobs. Uh, but I do have a cold, so I apologize if my voice sounds a little bit off or I'm not as great as I normally am. I apologize in advance, but I love you niggas. And uh, I'm pushing through. And the fact that we missed two shows, I really wasn't in the position to. Uh, yeah, she called in. <laughs> to she to call she, in. Yeah, she used all her occurrences. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I really did because I didn't want to go to work yesterday or today. To be completely honest, um, I woke up Sunday morning, throat was on fire, mm. and I had to come back from uh, New Orleans. Um, but I had a good time at Mardi Gras. Uh, hey, you, I know your family is from Louisiana, but have you Fuck been to them. Mardi Gras? Uh, when I was a kid, I ain't been as an adult now, nah. okay. but they like, it's, it's like a whole, like they off today. Like they, the whole Louisiana is off today. Yeah. Cause it's fat Tuesday. Yeah, Shout out. Happy so fat was, Tuesday. So they was off Monday. They had off Monday and Tuesday, like the whole fucking state shuts down, which is some fucking bullshit. So it was like a holiday. Which is trash yeah. cause nobody else <laughs> celebrates that shit. I could definitely go for a fat Tuesday or two. Uh, uh, I'm trying to think of a state holiday. Well, in North Carolina, basically y'all get off when Duke and Carolina play. Shit. That shit is on Saturdays and Wednesdays. No, <laughs> that shit is not. <laughs> it should be like they should implement. I, I mean, cause it's celebrated from state, from, from coast to them mountain wide so i think it should be celebrated and and i don't know we need to introduce some legislation for that because <laughs> i think because speaking of which it comes on uh this weekend i'm having a little shindig at the crib so if you listen y'all to this go to squad, house. more than welcome to come um but yeah that's it um well well i i went yeah, this was my first time yeah, it was my first time. time uh a what couple was, first your favorite me? thing about louisiana the food yes Actually, uh, it, I, I love the food. So I had, I had, um, frog legs for the first time. Fried? Yes. Banging. Fried buffalo. Nah, I don't know about that. That was great. Uh, I'm not a huge buffalo fan, but it was just spicy enough. Like, it was really, really good. Um, uh, as in everything. It tastes like chicken for real. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Like, people say it tastes like chicken, but that shit really tastes like chicken. No, it really does. And uh, my cousin was like, oh, it tastes like a better chicken. She was like, it tastes like better chicken, actually. They taste like, it tastes like a little bit better wing. Like, like yeah. a little bit more seasoned meat. Like, this yeah. meat's a bit more seasoned. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. And the fact that it, um, <laughs> okay, so funny story. So when they, so they were fried, right? So they were battered. Mm-hmm. And, um, when they lay them on the plate, they kind of give you the illusion of like a chicken wing versus, I'm sorry, a chicken tender versus mm-hmm. a chicken wing. Right. So I bite the joint. I'm like, I, I go first. Cause it's me and my cousin. We share some. And, uh, I was like, ah, it's, it's actually pretty good. So she bites into it and goes, ah, and throw and like throws it almost. And I'm like, yo, like, <laughs> I'm like, what's wrong? Like, what happened? She was like, I felt something and I felt something. And I'm like, what do you mean you felt something? She was like, did you feel like a gristly type thing? I was like, did you bite the bone, my nigga? I was like, I was like, no, you got to eat it like a wing. It's a bone in there. So basically she 
she bit into it like a chicken tender. Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, it freaked her out. Flesh, yeah. yeah, she bit into it like a chicken tender and she like it, it freaked her out. Right, <laughs> exactly. Nah. Um but then after she got herself together and ate it the proper way, um, it was actually really, really good. Um, I had some authentic gumbo that was really, Fire. really good. Uh, you had some crawfish at Touffe? I didn't have that. Did you uh, have crawfish? No, oh. I didn't get to get any. Cra- it was a so one of the things that I had on my list that I wanted, I was the um beignets. But oh, yeah. because everybody told me it was a particular place to get them from, I kind of ran out of time yeah, on my just, trip to go get them. I'm just a, I'm just fucking like donut meets fucking um, <laughs> donut meets like funnel cake. It's nothing. Yeah, it's nothing crazy but, about them. You know, I, I wanted to taste it. You know, I wanted to taste it. Um, I had some really good uh, crab claws. Get any po- you gotta uh, get a po' boy. You gotta get a po' I've, boy. I had a po' boy. I had a fish po' boy and I had a shrimp po' boy. Mm, that uh, bread is like, so like you've had po' boys at other places, but the yeah. bread is unique to New Orleans because of like the humidity and the way it's made is weird. But it's a certain like way, like the French bread is actually like much more, I don't know. I can't really like, it just tastes different. Like it's more, I don't know, po' boys in Louisiana versus anywhere else are fucking amazing. Yeah, I, there used to be a um, spot. I don't know if it's still there, but um, when I lived in uh, Durham slash Cary, I guess, because it was on Highway 55, but it was this uh, uh, place there that was a Louisiana-based uh, restaurant, and um, they actually uh, opened the restaurant after Katrina because mm. they were um, they were uh, displaced. Mo- yeah, displaced. Um, displaced here and the food was really good. That's the first place I tried alligator. Um, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, that shit good. Uh, yeah, my sister was chewy. like, That's my good. sister was like, well, mine was actually that chewy. It was actually really, really good the couple times that I've had it. And my sister talking about some, I didn't, I didn't know you ate all this stuff. I was like, look, I'll try anything that's visually appealing once. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't do like, a lot of different textures of things like i'm not a big like oyster fan or you i like know. fried oysters i can't do raw oysters that shit is weird yeah i can't do raw oysters i've never had fried oysters actually because i think i just wrote oysters off no nah, they're different but, you should try fried oysters that oyster po' boy is the best shit ever i was hoping you uh, got one of those uh, trust me yeah it's it's fried uh, that would be something i would have to try from somebody else but yeah, that shit this, fire. what i told my sister i'm like Worst case scenario, you put it in your mouth, you don't like it, you spit it out. Like, yeah. what is that? What's the lose? Like, yeah. I don't, I don't, don't get, like, what's the lose? <laughs> right, exactly. Unless you're allergic to it or some shit. She was not with it, uh, but my sister is, she, she'll tell yourself, I eat real simple. I eat real simple. So, but I did have some, uh, crawfish fondue, actually. Hmm. Never had that. Uh, and that was pretty good. So, you know, uh, it, it was very interesting just being on um like the French Quarter, Bourbon mm-hmm. Street. You go to Harris and all that. I did. Harris I did. I did. I went to that. Uh, it was a great uh, parade. I got I got mad beats. So we had this competition to see who could get the most beats. I actually won out of my group. It was me and my cousins who went. Um and uh I got sixty three beats. Uh, over the course of three days. So that was pretty good. Um, I, I, I've never seen people do so much for plastic in my life. Mm. Like it just turns into currency yeah. <laughs> somehow. Yeah. You know I mean, like they're useless. Yeah. You know I mean, but everybody, like the men were really wilding out. Like I really saw dudes like snatch beads out of girls' hands, mainly white dudes, yeah. but uh, like they were wilding out. Like, you know, it was girls showing their boobs and all that. So that was dope. I saw this little white boy walk up to this girl with some like, you know, like the bigger, more elaborate beads in his hand. Mm. And he walked up to her just as nice. And he was like, do you mind showing me your boobs <laughs> for these beads? And she said, sure. And pulled her titties out. <laughs> like, pleasure. It was just real. It's my pleasure, it was real sir. polite. Right? So nicely. Exactly. It, exactly. But it was like some douchebag, like frat boys there too. Like, oh, you yeah. know, those dudes, you can see them a mile away. Oh, the magas. Yeah. Magas. Yes. Uh, yes. That. They was holding up signs like, show me your butthole. Yeah. And it was this one dude who had like 
some huge bees like they were probably like the size of like the the biggest bee was probably like the size of like a, a basketball like it was the huge joints so he kept teasing all these dumb girls to like show them show him their boobs and then be like uh nah i don't like those who else <laughs> i was like and y'all bitches keep showing up for some bees like it was crazy i had a great time though i, I had a great time I had my first hand grenade um I'm not a huge frozen drink person. Yeah, I'm cool. But I could do those. I could do those because one of those got me yeah, super no nice. Get you fucked up, Jack. I was, and it, it didn't taste bad either. Yeah, I just, you I'm know, more of a straight liquor kind of guy. But yeah, I, I've had several. Uh, yeah, I was a win and roll type person. Yeah, you know mm-hmm. I mean, like it was, it was actually really good. They don't tell you what's in it. Yeah. Um, probably mad. But, I think it's mad tequila and shit. Yeah, I think it's mad everything bottom shelf, but they mm. blend it well and right. whatever the green sheet of shit is. Um, but I had a good time. Thank you, New Orleans, for uh, a good time. Shout out to my cousins, uh, for our cousins trip. Uh, we went on it. It was a good time. What you do this weekend? Uh, shit. Saturday was my son's birthday. So we had a uh, birthday party for him. Saw a pic. The whole family feet was fresh. Oh yeah. I got my little girl. I'm fucking, um, I won't even try. I won't even get her no shoes. Like it sucks having multiple kids and shit. (laughs) Cause I was going to get my son, my youngest son, some birthday sneakers and shit. But then like, I'm like, well, I can't have them without no brand new shoes either. So, um, she got them Air Max, them Air Max day shits, them ones you wanted to have a night day. The Nike uh, day shits. yeah, have this a nice so day. Fire, nigga. God, and somebody. you know what? Mine will be here Thursday. Them shit's so far. The 97, they had the 97s here. too. Them shit's is crazy, but they only have them in women's size. They only have them in men's size. Yeah. I was sick because I definitely was going to get those for myself. Fuck it. But, yeah. Um, but yeah, so yeah, my little boy had his birthday party at um, Adventure Land and shit, which was extremely dope because it was like a buck 50 and they all we had to do was show up like, nice. versus other parties and places where it's way more expensive. They rush you in and out. You got to bring your own party favors and shit. They had all the party favors. They had the camera and they had the pictures and all type of shit. Tokens, ride go karts, all that shit. Golf for free and shit. So uh, it was a great party. Um, happy birthday, Bubba. Yeah. Some niggas was in there about to fight and shit. It's just like, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> so man. Riley dirty. Yeah, man. Like, this one, and he won't from, he won't from Riley. Them niggas was like from Henderson or some shit. I could tell he was country as fuck. <laughs> and, um, so that was weird. But, uh, outside of that, it was, it was really good. It was a beautiful day. It was 70 degrees because, of course, it rains every fucking day. That shit is the weirdest shit ever. Like, it's, it rained four four out of seven days last week. And yeah. It rained, I want to say, Monday. And then I think it even rained Sunday because Saturday was like sa- – yeah, because Saturday was my son's birthday party. His birthday was actually on Monday, yesterday. And um, it was cold as fuck and rainy yesterday, and it was cold on Sunday, but it was like 70 degrees on Saturday. Beautiful day. Shout out to the Lord for my birthday, uh, for my baby birthday party. Um, but that was it. I ain't really do yeah. shit. Shout out, shout out to they the Lord for real. They had a clan rally downtown. Yo, that shit what? was crazy. A they clan a fuck, rally? Nigga, they had a clan rally. Oh, my like, God. And nobody got shot? Nobody got. They had police. The police was protecting them. That's wild. And they had a group of white people that were saying Black Lives Matter, which is crazy. It was like. I seen, I didn't know the shit was happening because I was preoccupied. And then once I got home and like settled out and shit, like seen mad people on Facebook going live and shit, like not mad people, but a few people going live and they were like clan rally. I said, clan rally. Like it was niggas out there and shit, but it was more white people like protesting with Black Lives Matter and shit. It was yeah. crazy, man. It was mad niggas, like nigga cops and shit. Like, I'm like, y'all it's niggas ain't had no cops. sick time. Like y'all didn't, like it, that didn't mean enough. Nah, like, like yeah, man. You yeah, couldn't call man. in that day. Like, like. I don't see like I I, I just I that that I, Nigga, I hope that I'm never in put in that situation. I hope that I'm never put in that situation where I have to pick my job right or my respect. Nigga, I'm out. I got. Yeah, I, I mean, man. If, like, if, if I'm, not, that, I'm not even. If I don't necessarily quit, I'm not working that day. I'm calling in. Like yeah. you know what I mean? Like I'm not gonna be like as a black man. I don't give a fuck what type of like i can't be protecting no goddamn clan rallies where these niggas is, is calling me a nigger and speaking down on me and my people nah fuck yeah that. yeah but if i do like if niggas slide in on my side <laughs> on my side of the bed hey that's the only reason i would be there like <laughs> I, don't know what yo, I was looking at my phone that right exactly yeah. exactly it, it you know it, it's hard that's why you know when we were talking about the whole nfl protests and shit yeah. like that like it would be hard for me just 
no i mean like i said a, a lot of people's racist a lot of racist shit go down that we don't know about but i feel like once you know about it it's a different thing right. and like i just feel like you know i it's a hard situation when your you know your company or whoever you work for say look this what we stand for and you gonna be here you know what i mean like yeah. you you're a police officer and you, and you black and you gotta protect the kkk right. now, i couldn't gotta, come in that day yeah. and y'all gotta respect that yeah, I'm, y'all I'm gotta cool. respect that. I'm cool. I'm straight. Like I, I, I feel like that could be an easy lawsuit, though. Nigga, I'm taking an occurrence. The fuck? Yeah, I, yeah. Put that shit. Hey, rolling calendar. That shit will fall off next year. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck? I'm like, hey, I can't do it today, baby. And well, I'm occurrence. Leave work early. Like, That's what time customer is the rally? service. Oh, I, fuck. I'm, a, I'm scheduling time off. The, the rally started at twelve. I'll be off at eleven. <laughs> Yo, my here. gun might accidentally go off, my nigga. Like, yeah, like, <laughs> oops, God, I dropped my pistol. <laughs> Shot somebody, but it was like right at the Capitol and shit. And it's crazy because I be downtown. Like, I take my kids, like, Capitol, the, the, uh, the governor's mansion and shit. Oh, not, excuse me, not, it wasn't at the governor's mansion. It was at the governor's office. Uh, and then, wow. like, it was right there on the Capitol. And that shit is right beside, like, the, um, the science museum. And I take my kids to the science museum pretty regularly. You know what I mean? So, like, yeah. had I, I couldn't imagine just stun- And it was a nice day, right? So, like, of all the days that it's, it's, it's been like. The, did the Lord shine down on yeah. the KKK? Like, I don't know, man. That shit was kind of <laughs> wild. Like, I just take it for he gave m- m- me the time for my kids and my okay, family. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, like, for sure. it was wild. Like, yeah. Like, it was a nice day. So, motherfuckers was out and about. And, like, so they, you know what I mean? Stumble across a goddamn clan rally and shit, like, just on some, I don't know, man. This shit crazy out here. Yeah. That, that, that's crazy. Um, I think it's crazy that, you know, they tried to label Black Lives Matter as a hate group. Right. And then they support. Kill not near one. Right. You know what? It ain't crazy at all. Yeah, it just I mean, ain't. It yeah, ain't it's, crazy. It's, it's yeah, part for the course. It's, actually, it's, it's crazy. It's just a phrase. Actually, yeah. like, but you know, it's it's it, it's 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 just wild. You know, what I'm saying like the world that we live in and and who's protected. You know, what I'm saying. Yeah, and who's not, man? But I'm glad, you know, your son had a great birthday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, despite awesome. the hoods around, um, the Lord definitely shined down on Louisiana because it was supposed to rain all weekend. And, uh, it was a couple like very small, quick scattered showers, but not enough to disrupt anything at all. So that was great. It stunk um, down that bitch, right? Huh? It had a stink, right? Like a stench. Nope. Actually, it did. It that's it crazy. Didn't. Every time I went, that shit always had a. It was always stinky. Yeah, that's what my. That's what um, that's what my cousin said too. Uh, she was just like, yeah, when we go to Bourbon, like it stink, like it, it smell bad. But I think they were fixing like the sewer system mm. before you know the beginning of Mardi Gras or whatever. And I guess that starts with the end of January or whatever. We went down there, and she was just like, oh no, nah, it smells nothing like I thought it was gonna smell. Yeah, that's because dope. she um. Her her husband or whatever had been working down there, so she had been going down there frequently over the past few months or whatever. But it actually wasn't. It but it was just, bro. It was just so many people, and then you know it, it gets so dirty. Yeah. Just because of all the people and the parades and just all the shit in the street and all yeah. that. So like every night when I got home, like I just felt filthy. Oh yeah. And for to everybody. Who did not tell me like that's not the place to try to get fresh for? <laughs> oh, I should have told you that. Yeah, you should have put me My on bad. because I seen you with that... some sneakers on too. I seen you on your story. <laughs> I was like, oh, it's, those aren't gonna be. Yeah, that wasn't man. a good idea. So like, I went to my old trusty all black Prestos. Yep. Um, I, I always take those with me. Or well, I got, I got like two pair of shoes that I take with me almost on every trip. They like the all shoes. black go tos. You know what I'm saying? They comfortable and they don't get fucked up easily. You know, you what shit I'm like saying? some so, Prestos. Prestos yeah. are the best. She yes. Like, some good walking sneakers. Yeah, so, all fuck. black Prestos. So shout out to my all black Prestos. But like when I took my clothes off and stuff, I had to make sure I like I just put them joints in another bag. Because I just felt like everything was dirty. Like it was just like a lot of people, a lot of dirt, a lot of whatever. But you know, they, they actually do a pretty good job of cleaning up pretty quickly over oh, yeah, the course yeah, of yeah. a few hours. They just fuck it back up the next day though. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta go to Essence Festival. So all those people that were there will be yeah. black. That's, that's exactly what I told my cousins and my sister. I was like, yo, we need to go to Essence Festival because it's just like this, but black. 
just like so that. if i don't and go hot. to essence and this hot. year i'm definitely going next year yeah my I'm calendar getting a little too. booked yeah but if i don't go this year i'm definitely going next year yeah i'm trying to figure sure. it out i want to go down and take my kids and shit to see my family and shit and then fuck hit it up that at, up at mardi gras that shit essence ain't no joke it's the it's like that shit is you been a, hell yeah i've been twice mm. maybe three times mm. I, I know for sure twice um as an adult yeah Oh, yeah, I've been twice and then, um, yeah, that should be done, man. That shit ain't nothing like, like, it's the most beautiful black woman I've ever seen in my life. Like, it's the most amount of, like, and my old lady, like, she was like, yo, there's so many hoes out here. Like, this shit crazy. <laughs> like, for real. <laughs> like, bad everywhere. Like, just women, droves and droves of women. That shit just be turned, like, cause New Orleans is already a party city. So, like, yeah, like, you got people from all over. Like, it's a, you know, a lot of, you know, southern people, you know, and driving, driving, um, proximity, or whatever, but everybody, a lot of people just fly in because it's such a, you know, great concert series over the course of several days and shit. So yeah, yeah, shit dope. Yeah, I, 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 I one thing I do want to say about Louisiana or about New Orleans that I really, really loved because it was a lot of people there, and it was a lot of people on top of each other, and it was a lot of drunk people there. Mm. However, the cops was chilling like shit. Oh, yeah. Like they was, they, they had their presence there, but I didn't see them tackle nobody, arrest nobody, like no nothing. Like they, they was really like chilling, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like they was really chilling. And as far as like fights and anything like that, I only saw like one slight incident where it was like a dude and a girl. And I don't know if it was domestic or what, but they wasn't really fighting. They was kind of getting into like a pushing Mm-hmm. kind of match type thing and the cops still stood to the side and let the friends handle it though yeah they're like they was shit. really like, like the drinking age the legal the legal drinking age in louisiana is 18 i didn't know that yeah, yeah oh that's 18. probably why they don't be tripping for real though. yeah because they um so they opted out like so the the federal well guy, some places said you had to be 21 to get in yeah that's just but it's still the oh. legal drinking age is 18 you can drink at, you okay. can go to the liquor store to the grocery store and buy liquor there but um but okay. yeah, like they opted out of like Louisiana opted. I don't know if it's still that way, but it was for a long time. They opted out of uh, federal funding because like the federal laws, that's why everybody else is 21 because they get federal funding for their roads. But they figured that if they have 18, like pretty much for New Orleans specifically, but uh, if they have like an 18 year old um, le- uh, drinking law. They just make it up into taxes. Yeah. And then they just yeah. pay for the roads through the taxes of alcohol. So. Uh, I think that is, uh, great for, uh, uh, 18 year old Sean, but as yeah. an adult, I'm like, keep that shit 21. Sure. <laughs> you know what I mean? Can, can. You know what I mean? But I would have loved that. If, yeah. And when we were 18 to do that shit. Yeah. Um, I Cause I was 19 when I went down there and I was like, oh shit, I can go buy a liquor. Like my sister was like, you can go get me a bottle. I was like, I ain't 20, ain't 21. She was like, oh no, it's 18. I was like, shit. And then. I learned shortly thereafter, like outside of being in Louisiana, that it was because of the federal laws and them, you know, withdrawing. What, what's shit. what's the thing for eighteen now? Like you remember, like eighteen, all you could do was really like buy some cigarettes, and don't yeah. nobody even smoke cigarettes. Yeah, and buy a shotgun. What's, shotgun, mm-hmm. cigarettes. That's it. What, buy what's, blunts and shit. Yeah, I mean, you can buy blunts. Oh, legally. you can buy a blunt. Yeah, I get yeah. it. <laughs> then y'all wait to 21 and then 25 you can buy a car and then i mean you can rent a car and and then that's that oh yeah i forgot all about that rent a car shit yeah then you gotta be uh that's still the same 65 yeah it's still the same mm. well i i see it sometimes when i rent cars it say are you 25 i didn't uh, since i am i always <laughs> pick that so i don't know what it says when you're not 25 you're like, like nah i ain't 25 <laughs> I'm trying to get my shit easy breezy. I don't need no smoke. Right. Um, did you listen to your your man's album, Offset? That's your favorite Migo? Uh I listened to some of it when it came out. Um I listened to like the first five joints and I was like, yeah, I'm cool. So nah. Really? Yeah. So your favorite Migo didn't do with what you nah, thought? No, I like them as a collective and I don't even like them as a collective. Like I've never listened to an, an entire I, mm-hmm. I like them as a collective only. But as far as like I can't listen to them for for a long amount of time like i've never listened to a full album for them because i just can't do it Um, i think it's very i think i I didn't listen to the album um however uh i haven't heard a lot about the album which is also a bad thing (laughs) you know what i'm saying like i feel like it's crazy that um migos was doing so well as a group 
And uh, all three albums fell for that. Yeah. That's weird. Like, I it thought is. at least one of them was going, uh, but I think, you know, <sighs> let's be honest, Migos is not the greatest. Not they're, 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 they're not, they're not the best rappers. And I feel like, like their, their, their style period can eventually get old. And I think they're, it's kind of tapering off. I think, not, I don't think collectively, I think as a group, they're, they're great together. I just don't, I don't think, I, I think that their flows make you, make up a collective and it makes it for good music. I don't think they're, I can't really tell them apart to be completely honest I on a track. I don't, apart. I don't know. I don't know the, the Quavo's different voices. a singer and he uses like the, he's the more of the harmony. And then, um, takeoff is the better of the three rappers. And then offset. I don't know. I can tell I'm good at distinguishing voices and shit, but I don't think I pay that much attention to be completely honest. And if I'm listening to me goes 10 times out of 10, I'm probably drunk. Cause I'm not just in the crib. Yeah. You know I mean, yeah. just listening to Amigos album, but they are definitely mood music. You know, I put them in the mood music category where, you know, it don't really matter what they say in that beat go in and it, they, they can ride the beat and mama, you know, I, like, I mean, I like, I like them as a collective, you know what I'm saying? For like, cause they, they always got dope singles and shit. And like, I like a lot, all their, pretty much all their singles, like, especially as of late, you know what I mean? But I, I just yeah, don't they think do they should have piece themselves singles. out. Like I think, but it's still a mood. It's still a mood. Oh yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like yeah, I'm not a like, mood. I'm not pumping no fucking. Like I'm not putting that shit in the deck. <laughs> However, I have been listening to T Pain. T Pain album is fucking crazy. I'm a. T- he dropped something new. Yeah, um, it's called One Up. That shit is incredible. I love. I've been listening to that shit like hell. I like Two Chains album a lot because I'm not a oh, Two okay. Chains fan album wise. Really? Like I like a lot of his. I like a lot of his songs, but I'm not. Like, I like this first album. I never liked any of his albums, but this, this like- new joint is fucking crack. Uh, well, his first commercial album that was uh based on a true story, right? The first commercial album because he had like. Yeah. So mixtapes and stuff before that, right? Yeah, and then yeah, and he had like boats and some shit like yeah, based yeah, on the true yeah. story too. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so but that first this, one was dope. This shit hard. I like this shit a lot. Pretty girls like Trapman was was cute, cool. I like a couple yeah, of off that, that was one. pretty cool. But this shit hard though. Like this shit is like a like it's like a mixture of like old school soulful hip hop. Then he got like his trap shit. Then he got like West Coast influence. And then he got um. Man, we gotta get Hitmaker the fuck out of here. Like Hitmaker gets on my fucking nerves, and I what think it's mean? more so because like he's incredibly dope, but he's really not that dope because all he's doing is recreating dope, dope ass music. And I'm kind of hating because uh, all I could have done, I, right. if I was him, I could have just re- recreated the same shit. Because like the shit he got on, uh, he got a joint with uh, on Two Chains album and uh, Aria Aria and the Grande sitting there. She's fucking smoked that shit. But um, I gotta listen to that, that shit. Crazy. Case. They redid. Um, a Marie, why do followers fall in love? Shit crazy. But it's nothing but a remake. Like, it's exactly the same. It's like the same beat. Hitmaker. Yeah. And he does all that shit. And this shit be fire as hell, but like, it's really not. Cause it's like, it's just the recreation of the wheel. You know what I'm saying? So, because like, I think that it's is the easiest hating. way to get a hit though. And that's me, I that's always partially that. me hating. Cause I should have like been, I'm like, damn, I should have just take old school fucking songs and just put like a crazy new drum line and a couple 808s underneath that shit. And, yeah. And freak it a little bit and that shit is a hit. You know what I mean? So Listen, I That shit um, hard though. That shit super hard. That's what I'll always say Brian that though. Smoke that shit. Like she I say if I had a um if I if I if I ever put out a group or had wrote an album or just anything with music, all you do is get somebody and then you recreate something that's already been done. Like and that's instant. Like you got a hit right there. So you know, shout out to Berg for uh realizing that's how you gonna get a hit time after time after time. Yeah, and I didn't know shit. until um, you know, recently that Berg did all of those, you know, albums or whatever. But uh shout out to Berg for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that shit hard. But I <laughs> getting I really that like easy bag. That shit hard, but T Pain is like T Pain and K- Kaylani are my two favorite new releases that I've been playing. Constantly. Uh Kaylani got a whole project. Yeah, I told you that already. I told you that last week. I couldn't remember. Yeah, it's like it's like a, it's called uh, "Why We Why We Wait" or some shit because she's pregnant. She about to drop. So yeah. um, that shit. She I, got his one. Oh song. yeah, you you sent me the two songs from Kayla. Yeah, feels yeah, 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 yeah. and um, love language. But then she got a joint with Ty Dollar. That's hard. She got a joint with Black. That's hard. And a joint with music. That's hard. It's like nine songs. That shit is crazy. I enjoy it a lot. 
I'm an oh, R&B nigga. I like R&B. T-Pain, a lot. T-Pain. I know you. I know. You, I know you've been liking the recent T-Pain. T-Pain. Um, is there anything crazy. different, or is just classic T-Pain? It's just great T-Pain. He got this one song with fucking Tory Lanez called Roll On. That shit. Is I don't perfect. like that song. You don't like that song? No, it sounds dated. How the fuck does it sound dated? I don't like it. That shit. Crazy. It just sounds like T-Pain. I just don't like it. Okay, to be fair, I've only seen the one-minute clips of the song, and I didn't like that one-minute clip. That shit is How about crazy. that? Nah, nah, nah. That shit is crazy. Tory, Tory Lane smoked that shit. Tory Lane's dope. I can't even front on that little nigga. That nigga nice. That's what's up. Yeah, uh, I'll definitely, I, I'll, I'm definitely going to check out the 2 Chains and the Kaylani. I'll get T-Pain a world. Um, T-Pain be a hit or miss for me in recent history. T-Pain is a legend. Nobody can take that away from T-Pain. One of the greatest of all um, time. He's and, still great. Uh, uh, I just feel like, uh, some people music grow and some people have that same sound. And more recently, I feel like T-Pain, it just sound like T-Pain. Like it, I don't see no growth in it. You know what I mean? So it just sound like 2000s to me. Um, but I will check it out only cause I fuck with T-Pain in general. Um, Rest in peace to Luke Perry. Yeah, man, that's wild. And um, Luke Perry and fucking um, damn the wrestler nigga that died. What's his name? Uh, fuck the um, ball head nigga, the big ball head nigga, right? King Kong Bundy, man. Yeah. Shout out to King Kong Bundy, man. He was um, sixty two when he passed. I I wasn't um <clears throat> after I realized wrestling was fake, I didn't watch it anymore. Um, what was when was his uh era? King Kong Bundy. Uh, like the Ric Flair, like the, like early WCW, WWF, early like. Yeah. Shit. Like 80s or 90s? He was uh, 60 late something. 80s, so, late 80s, okay. early 90s. Gotcha. I used to watch wrestling with my grandfather and then I thought it was real. And then when I was old enough to realize oh, yeah, it was I fake, I got mad. Thinking that shit was fake. Like, <laughs> but that shit ain't fake. It's just choreographed. Cause the that means it's you fake, jump off nigga. the top of a goddamn rope. Well, I was just talking about that shit today at work. Like you jump off. A top rope, eighteen feet in the air, and land on a nigga, and like you still got to do it strategically. Yeah, 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 yeah. That shit still hurt. Fuck. Yeah, like, you, you ain't just got all this on, energy, on and you like, ah, I'm about to body. rip this nigga head off. <laughs> nah, wrestling man, fake. And then like once I got right. older, it's fake. And when I got older, and like once I start hearing like the dialogue, I was like, Lord, I I used to love this, but to my defense, I was a child. Oh yeah, the hill sure. is a grown man. <laughs> these 40 year old niggas is weirdos I'm still loving that shit but niggas um, still be loving it though like I, I know my like my man said he took his kids he was like he was more pumped up than his kids I was like damn <laughs> did you um did you watch were you a 90210 fan back in the 90s not really I mean damn. I know I was aware of it but nah I ain't watch that shit I loved 90210 I loved 90210 uh I used to watch that shit all the time shout out to all my 90210 fans um, I'm more Luke of a Perry, Saved by the Bell kind of guy. Yeah, but it was two different things. Know, it was like dramatic like Saved by the Bell. Yeah, <laughs> put them all in one bucket. I ain't even mad at you. That's what yeah. they do to us. <laughs> that's why they. Com- that's why everybody compare Power and Empire, and they two totally, totally different, different things. Shit. Um, but I, I, I loved. Uh, they Peach say Pit. I'm gay. That <laughs> <laughs> was the wildest fucking shit ever. That battle rap was the wildest fucking battle rap gay shit ever. You stupid. Shut anyway. Up Jesse. <laughs> Poor Jesse. Man, get, listen, gay. you gonna chill and give my nigga Luke Perry some respect. Yeah, for sure. You you went off on uh Big Bundy. Let's let's give my man Luke Perry some respect. Oh, yeah, he Luke died of of a of a massive stroke and he yeah, was only wild. like fifty two or some shit like that. Yeah, fifty two. That was crazy. Um everybody go to the doctor, get yourself checked out. Ain't no age, ain't no age on dying these days. And, and shit like that is always the scariest shit to me. Where like out of nowhere, your body just malfunctions Mm. and you never knew anything about it. Like that's the, like aneurysms and strokes and heart attacks and shit like that. Strokes usually come from high blood pressure though. So you gotta like kind of be, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, You know, other shit can cause, yeah. Other shit can cause like strokes and shit too though. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like you can get like um blood clots and shit like that. I don't know, man. All that shit's scary to me. Y'all, y'all, please get yourself checked out. For sure. Uh I, I scheduled my physical this week because 
I, uh, been putting it off. You know how you get to the shit Monday. Like I need to go ahead and schedule this, and this. but I make sure I schedule my dentist appointment and my dermatology and all the shit you can see, right? right. Like, like get all that, that, that physical shit. You know what I'm saying? That, that superficial shit fixed. All and right. then, you know, you get to the other shit, but that's not the way to go. Everybody, you know, get yourself checked out. Um, B, we promised people some black history facts. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. we, we were, uh, lacking. Uh, the two weeks we were off, so I don't feel like we gave Black History Month. It's just due. And, uh, I'll go first this week. Um, for my Black History honoree, um, in 1990, for her first bid for public office, Howard University grad Sharon Pratt Kelly was elected the mayor of Washington, D.C., uh, following, um, Mayor Barry. Um, and she was the first African American woman to serve as mayor of a, to serve as mayor of a a major American city, which is my city. And that's why I picked, uh, mayor, uh, Sharon Pratt Kelly. Um, they kind of gave her a hard time because when I tell you growing up, Niggas love that crackhead Mayor Barry, bro. They love Mayor Barry. Mayor Barry did do a lot for the city. I was although say, what, I wonder what shit. fundamental things he did to, to help the city. He did a lot for the city. He created a lot of jobs. He had the summer youth program. He really looked out for black people, like, during the city. I'm not going to take that away from him. But he was a, like, crackhead, crackhead, crackhead. And, um, you know, he had the whole prostitute thing and, and, you know, all of that stuff. And my family had big debates over him. Um, uh, um, uh, sh- uh, Mayor Sharon Pratt Kelly, uh, aka Dixon, she got married. Um, she w- is known for like increasing black businesses, black and Hispanic businesses during, during her term. So it was like Mayor Barry, then it was, uh, Mayor Pratt Kelly, and then it was Mayor Barry again. So, you know, that's how my city gets down. Um, but I wanted to shout her out, um, because I don't know that we, we tried to do kind of like more obscure, uh, black history facts. And, you know, I tried to do facts that were things that I cared about. So last week it was sneakers. This week it was my city. So shout out to, uh, former mayor of Washington, DC, Sharon Pratt Kelly. Um, what about you? I got B? one. Mine is just more like a black history fact necessarily. So, um, inoculations was in- introduced to America by a slave, right? So, um, it says few, t- few details are known, but the birth of, I guess his name is, I don't know, it's O-N-E-S-I-M-U-S. So, Onesimus, I don't know. Okay. Say it again. But it's O-N-E-S-I-M-U-S. Onesimus? What is that? Okay. Onesimus? I don't know. But anyway. Okay. Um, it was assumed he was born in Africa in the late 17th century before eventually landing in Boston. Um, one of a thousand people of African descent living in Massachusetts colony. One Smith was a gift to the Puritan church minister, Cotton um, Mather from his congregation in 1706. Um, so basically he told the uh, Cotton Mather about centuries old tradition of inoculation practice in Africa by extracting the material from an infected person and scratching it into the skin of an uninfected person. You can deliberately introduce smallpox to healthy individuals, making them immune. So basically he was the reason. He invented vaccination. Correct. Nice. Back in 1706, which was wild. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Um, how was he educated? Was he educated? I Did you say know. it just okay. you know, he came from Africa? So, I mean, he just came, he just gave him some, some game from what they were doing in Africa. Okay. Um, That's wild though. You never yeah. hear about shit. Yeah, like so that. he, um, his, I guess his master convinced doctor, some doctor in the area to experiment with the procedure when a smallpox epidemic hit Boston in 1721 and over 240 people were inoculated, um, opposed politically, religiously, and medicinally. In the United States, and a broad public reaction to the experiment put Mather and Boyson's lives in danger, despite re- records indicating that only 2% of patients requesting inoculation died, compared to 15% of the people not inoculated who contracted smallpox. So, shout out to him for fucking just showing that we taught y'all niggas how to bathe, and we also saved y'all's lives in more yeah. than one way. So. <laughs> well, shout out to him. That's y'all black history 
facts um out here uh we got a mayor and uh the guy from africa who invented vac- vaccinations um it's been a big uproar about vaccinations in in the past couple years um and uh, i read something the other day um about how basically these parents are up in arms about vaccinations and they're not getting their kids vaccinated and it's kind of like reintroducing shit that um we got rid of like measles and shit like that so i don't have kids i don't know if you pro or against vaccinations however you don't want your little nigga having polio so yeah, man, you, might, tough. Like, you might want to think about that yeah i mean vaccination shit is, is i don't know like i've done a lot of research on them shits and you know they initially they were all tried to say they were linked to a lot of vaccinations with like especially i think the t-dip or some shit like that was linked to autism or whatever studies have shown yeah. that's inc- inaccurate but if you ask a lot of people like one of my buddies his son is actually autistic and he said um excuse me after his two-year-old checkup that he was fine before that, before he went in the office, and after that he wasn't. Like, he had, yeah, like a severe case of autism. So, I don't know. I mean, I can. I all I know is when I had my kids, like he was like super, like adamant and and like you know what I mean, like making sure that you know they, I don't know, just different shit. So like I remember yeah. with my with my kids, like they tried to get, we would break them up. You know what I mean? Like they would try to give you like eight or nine shots at one fucking time. I'm like nigga, I'm not doing yeah. that. Like I don't want eight or nine shots. So I'm definitely yeah. not giving my damn six month old child fucking nine shots i'll be back next yeah week. and then they like in certain doctor's offices like if you didn't have it within a certain time they wouldn't treat you so we've we've switched our doctor's offices several times just because like they wouldn't allow like if you didn't have certain and um vaccinations within a certain time you couldn't come to that shit i'm like but and then i started thinking i'm like well who are we protecting here because if we come to this this facility and everybody's vaccinated but my kid isn't like what what's the difference like shouldn't they be okay <laughs> the ones that are vaccinated yeah. you know what i'm saying like they have they're they're vaccinated so what are y'all what are y'all scared of you know what i mean like, well maybe it's the people that's waiting to be vaccinated yeah i, I don't guess. know i don't know i, I don't mean know. yeah i really don't know i don't know <laughs> Interesting stuff. I, I i don't know um yeah it's, it's 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 been it's been it's been a really it's been a really hot topic lately so yeah. that's very interesting that you said you know like you you break you break yeah it i up broke my shit up things like, like we that. came back two weeks later like because that shit is a lot man them niggas be like sore as fuck and then like it's just like you're introducing infection to their bodies and shit like it's a lot of it's actually schools out there that don't um like they don't have like it's for people who don't vaccinate their children um so yeah. like you like you can't go to public school like it has to be, you know, private institutions or whatever, but because um, it's like public, you know. Yeah, public school won't even let you come to school without your records in, oh, yeah, in most states. Sure. Yep. If you haven't been vaccinated, you can't come to school. Yeah, it's other schools. It's like alternative schools where people who don't subscribe to vaccinations and more of a holistic approach. Yeah. Um, I, I'm with vaccinations. I'm okay with vaccinations, but I just know that, um, like, the CDC and shit, like, uh, it was some interview that I listened to with um, – Louis Farrakhan back in the day and uh, Bobby Kennedy, which is obviously um, JFK's little brother. He came to him because it was an epidemic um, where it was like a, it was a CDC whistleblower who basically spilled the beans to Bobby Kennedy that they were strategically infecting black young black men with more estrogen and different things like that. Uh, and vaccinations to um, basically like cause autism and cause all these adverse reactions to it. Um, yeah. So that had my damn, this was prior to me even having kids. So I was, I started doing my research and that shit was actually true. Um, and yeah. they have a lot of other CDC whistleblowers, um, you know, that, that have spoken out against vaccinations in certain forms. So you just got to do your own research for yourself. It's all a crap shoot. Um, Cause I mean, if you don't have them, then you are subject to, Certain yeah. diseases like measles and chicken pox. Because, like, kids don't get chicken and pox. Mumps. You know what I mean? Like, kids don't get chicken pox, which is – I had chicken pox. You know what I mean? That's crazy that kids don't get kids chicken don't pox. Get chicken well, pox. I mean, I think it's great because I remember my whole elementary was basically shut down because everybody got chicken pox at the same time. I remember yeah. having chicken pox for, like, two trash. weeks. 
That shit was trash and it leave marks all over you. Yeah, man. That shit was trash. I got a, a one on my thigh right now. Like, I didn't have a whole <laughs> lot of scars. Thighs. But I had like, I had a big ass, not a big ass, but it was, I don't know if it's there now. I need to look. But it, I remember <laughs> like it being there for a long time. And I was pumped up because I had got chicken pots because I remember everybody else in my class. I'm, I was in kindergarten. <laughs> And everybody was getting chicken pox and they were staying home for like, you know, a long time. So I was like, oh yeah, I'm trying to get chicken pox too. I got chicken pox. I'm mad as fuck. Like, damn, Bro, this shit I, trash. Had, I had like fourth grade. I got my shit in kindergarten. I remember having my joints in Calamine fourth grade. And oatmeal bags. Yes. And my mom, so I, I didn't, I couldn't take pills back then and I couldn't, um, I just hated the shit crushed up. Like the taste was disgusting, mm-hmm. but I couldn't just swallow them. So my mom gave me like, mad medicine like the whole time and i threw all that shit behind the bed like she don't know that i never took any medicine wow. like for my chicken pot. that's crazy i don't think that you, was crazy it wasn't a med- no, maybe i don't know i don't remember, I just remember uh, it wasn't like was it wasn't like meds to like get rid of the chicken pox but it was meds to like help you reduce the fever oh, and yeah, shit yeah, like yeah, that yeah, and like yeah. the pain the little bit of pain that may have come with it like that type of meds you yeah, know that shit was for? trash uh, but the chicken pot just got to kind of run its course. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, it's very interesting you bring up that autism topic because um, I've kind of learned uh, a, a lot about, well, I can't say a lot, but I've learned a lot more than I used to know about autism um, and its impact on um, young black boys because um, a couple of my friends have sons and they have um, autism, which is very interesting um, because I – don't know a lot of people in like a cluster that you know have like autism and as y'all know like autism is a spectrum so you can have it in, in, mm. you know different types of autisms or different degrees for lack of better words um of autism um and she was telling me that like black boys have a six time higher rate of autism yep. than girls or white boys or like anybody like it's just super high and just seeing like two, three friends whose boys are kind of less than 10 years old, you know what I'm saying? Have autism is, is, is very, you know, interesting for lack of better words. Like what, what's going on here? So, you know, that just brings it back to what you were saying about, you know, oh, yeah. what they're doing. Some, I can send you some shit now. Yeah, I, you know, it's kind of hard with information because you want information, but then you don't want to go down a hole. Yeah, 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 totally. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, I you'll easily. One time. Like, I was, I was on some, I don't know, I get fixated on shit sometimes. So, like, certain yeah. shit that's like, I get, like, I don't know. I was, that was like really when I was making my black power charge and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm yeah. always <laughs> cognizant and shit. And obviously, like, with this down for the cause, but like, you know, you just have your like days of reckoning and shit. And, yeah. Like, I don't know what it was, but like, I just had got on my like black power shit, like extremely hard. And I just started watching, man, like, you know, not conspiracy videos, but just mad, like old Louis Farrakhan shits. And then it was just like taking me down rabbit holes. And then I saw that one and the shit. And then like, it was with Bobby Kennedy and shit. And I'm like, damn. And like, it showed like Bobby Kennedy in his office, like kicking that shit. Like, fuck. I'm like, God damn. Yeah. He was like, yeah. And. You know, it's it's kind of one of those things, you know, I tell everybody, you know, it's basically information out there to support whatever you think, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Whether it's right or wrong, exactly. we don't know, but it's definitely information to support um, whatever you're saying. And, um, oh, on, on that same on that same topic, um, so I know y'all want, want us to speak on the, the Find and Le- Neverland and the hot topic of uh, Michael Jackson and all of these uh, documentaries that's coming out, but... Next week, we're going to have, um, uh, licensed therapist Tan Valines on, uh, of Lynn Therapy on the show next week. So we can talk about sexual abuse and all of these documentaries that's coming out. Um, and just to discuss, discuss it from, from different angles, um, of getting information and, and sexual abuse survivors and, and all of those type things. So make sure y'all, um, Hit us next week and listen to us because that's what we're going to talk about. Shout out to Tam. Tam has been on the show before um, and she'll be back with us next week. So make sure y'all come back next week for that. Yeah. Um, your man's R. Kelly is doing a, a, a CBS interview with Gail King tomorrow that's supposed to debut I, where I'm, he looking bad crazy. 
I'm definitely watching that as well. So we'll probably do some type of. Say, it, that'll be integrated. No, bitch, you ain't fighting for your life. Right. You, 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 you feel the heat now. Yeah. You was untouchable. Yeah. You know I mean, and now you feel the heat because you know it's about to go down. And she asked him on a clip like, um, you know, well, you know, you know about your history or whatever, whatever. And this nigga never said, I didn't do it. The nigga said, but I beat my case. That's all he said. He never said, I didn't, like, yeah. I didn't have sex with underage girls. He said, I beat my case. So it's very interesting, uh, the words that he choose to use. But on that note, you ready to get into some litter shit? Yeah. Get into this pop culture shit. It was a light week, so that was good as far as people acting a fool out there. Uh, what you drinking? Uh, I got a little kettle uno. Uh, uh, I am drinking a hot toddy. I'll say you drink uh, some Theraflu, nigga. It's, it's a hot toddy. You know, it's like. That was a dope song. Whiskey. Yes, it was a dope song. I think a whole whiskey, smoke that shit. I'm about to, water, lemon, cinnamon. Let me go ahead and man. download that. <laughs> it is warm. Hot toddy. Oh. Hot toddy. <laughs> that shit was hard. That nigga's whole smoke that shit. How you spell that shit? Hot toddy. <laughs> hey nigga do that shit on your own time nigga this is oh, my own time oh, this ain't your own damn time this the people time they don't wanna nigga, fucking they hear want, you they about, look they, up those shit somebody was like yo that shit hard I'm about to that go get shit that is hard time. but they don't wanna wait till you google hot the shit <laughs> Whoa, can you oh. I be? Be that shit was hard boy <laughs> um that so uh put, put, put your cups up that shit was crack and let's just, I don't even want to get nobody the fuck out out of here. I just want to have a toast for loves that have been lost. Hi, Tony. Uh, <laughs> um, so in our first topic today, um, uh, so Diddy, um, uh, is really missing Kim Porter. Like, um, uh, he should, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? He, she seemed and like a niggas, good woman. Man, for fucking going at that nigga, man. <laughs> um so did he basically admit that off. he played himself you can you can give your, your your dissertation on that that's exactly how this show is set up i tell you what's going on and then you go off all right um did he admit that he played himself in his relationship with kim porter on sunday he posted a nostalgic and heartwarming photo of him and kim porter uh with a broken heart emoji um and smh beside it um, an IG commenter posted under his pic and said, when she was alive, you didn't want to marry her. Confused Negro, G-T-F-O-H, which means get the fuck out of here. Shut the fuck in up, a, bitch ass nigga. In a moment of public self-awareness, did he actually reply and say, I know I played myself, shaking my head. Um, and meanwhile, though, I don't know if it's odd timing. Or it's trolling, right? So it seems very coincidental that every time Diddy posts a picture of Kim Porter, Cassie posts a picture of her and her new nigga, Alex Fine. Um, which was very interesting. Is his name just, Alex Fine or are you just call his him name Fine? Is, no, his a, name is Alex Fine. He's a white boy. He ain't really my cup of tea. He's not a bad looking white boy, though. Mm. I ain't gonna say that. He's not a bad looking white boy at all. Um but his name is Alex Fine. Um, and he used fine. to be, he used to be, uh, um, uh, so legend says that <laughs> Diddy legend. actually, uh, Alex Fine was Diddy and Cassie's trainer. Mm. And now Cassie is with fucking the pool uh, guy. <laughs> fucking the pool boy. You know, trainers be getting mad pussy and they'll be having not a dollar. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. Shit. Right, and tank right. tops, <laughs> muscles and tank tops. Um, have you have you seen any of those pictures Cassie has posted uh, by way of the blogs? Because I don't follow. Yeah, Cassie. I have. I um, didn't know. You I think didn't she trolling? It to be coincidental, but I mean, I guess you think she cro- trolling or it's, or it's coincidental? Uh, I think it's. I don't know. Shit, who knows? She probably. Hurt. I, what she do you stra- think? She hurt the boots. The she question. probably hurt boots. You think she hurt? Yeah, I mean, she did. St- yeah, she was with that nigga for. I mean, she was with that nigga for a long ass time, but no, a ring. decade. Yeah. yeah, she won. I mean, yeah. she. I'm definitely sure she would have much rather been with Puff. I mean, maybe she might be happy. I think, but I think 
think she left Puff though. Yeah, I she don't definitely think she Puff, got tired. She got yeah, yeah, she hit her bottom. I'm pretty sure because he just he won't like you know what I mean. He was getting the the milk from the cow. You know what I mean? Yeah, but, yeah. I, I think it's um. I I definitely think that she. I, I'm hoping that it is um just a coincidental thing. Um, yeah, I don't think she only fucked because, up like that. Because I mean, I yeah, think she probably she had a good died. It's not like him. he just with a new bitch. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I think he, she mean? probably I, from I mean from the outside looking in, they had they had a, a dynamic family in terms of everybody kind of getting along. It looks like. So I yeah. don't think you know. I mean, I think she was pretty fucked up. I I think I recall her posting some you know pretty, um, you know deep shit. Which again, this is all Instagram and fucking internet. But one right. would think that you know, spending around, been around a motherfucker and their kids for a long time, that you would some develop some type of you know love for them. Yeah, because I think she posted like a sweet message to like Kim Porter yeah. or whatever. And yeah, she seemed Kim seemed like a person that like nobody had any ill. Like things to say, of, so I would yeah. imagine it probably kept the same came, same energy. I would imagine. Yeah, I think so. Um, Did Diddy is like, you know, he going through a lot with this. He lost two girls at one time. You know what I'm saying? Oh uh, yeah, that's true. It, 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 it hurt. Yeah, you know I mean, sometimes when you see somebody with the next, and then you also lost one to like, you know. Death. Death. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, damn, like a one two punch. And he said some, you know, he posted something a while ago. It was like, yeah, I took a lot of L's last year, you know, blah, 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 blah. Um, do you think, um, do, do you think that Diddy is like really regret, regretting not being with Kim Porter or he's regretting the fact that now he's, she's passed away and now he does not have a chance to try to reconcile if he even wanted to. Probably a combination of both. I mean, yeah. you always, you know, miss what you don't have. You know what I mean? So I That's think it's true. a combination of the two. Like, you ever regret it prior to you getting married? Of course. Have you ever regretted not making something official with somebody in the past? Um, it's a loaded question. I'm gonna go ahead and pass on that one. <laughs> you think so? Yeah, I'm gonna just pass. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Y'all can't even say nothing. Y'all didn't have lives before y'all got married. Yeah, but you? I don't feel like did you ever? Lo- did you ever lose your wife? I mean, did yeah. you ever like lose your girl, Hell like yeah. your current wife? Yeah. How did How did you get her back? Uh, persistence overcomes. What did the you do? What did you do to lose her? And how did you? Well, get I was her just back? cheating and shit. Yeah. Yeah. And she dipped. She moved back to. Um, DC and shit. So, yeah, persistence overcomes a resistance. What? So, what exactly did you do to go get her? Uh, I literally went to go and get her. <laughs> I just <laughs> used to drive to DC every fucking weekend and be like, yeah, like let's go out to eat and shit. And I got a room if you feel let's like. Let's go staying. out to eat. <laughs> yeah, I got a room if you feel like staying and shit like that. Hey, you a basic nigga. Niggas always like let's go eat, and girls be like, okay. Yeah, I mean, she was. It worked though, yeah, so it clearly. don't matter. It yeah. worked. It don't even matter. Yeah, I, I, I've um, in my past, I've def. I, I feel like it's probably one person that, at the time, I felt like, dang, I probably, you know, what I'm saying, like, maybe I should have did something with that. But I was like fresh out of a relationship, and it was like. You know, like the first motherfucker you mess with, like after a relationship, and it, it don't really matter like how good they are or what type of person they are. Like you just ready to run these streets. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like you just not in that mode. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, for me when I was after I finished, probably like a year and a half later, <laughs> you know what I mean? After I was just like, all right, let's see if this can work. They was like, fuck you. <laughs> like, yeah, no, sure. you don't just get to come around. When you want to and decide, you know what I'm saying? Like, you gonna try to, you know, snatch me up now? No, I'm not doing it. Um, like in the present, like in 2019, when I think about it, um, you know, they're a totally different person now. And this is years later. <clears throat> and our lifestyles definitely don't match up. So I don't know, but you know, if you was with somebody, you don't know what their life would have turned out to be. Sure. They were super dope then, but like now, it's like, you know, like mad religious and all that. And that, that ain't really my cup of tea. Um, I do spiritual. I can't do mad religious. You yeah, know what I mean? I like I can't, I can't really d- deal with that. Cause it's a lot like, you know, low key culty. Like mm-hmm. when it gets to like slight cult vibes and I'm just like, eh, I really can't do that. 
Oh, uh, but you David know what I'm saying? <laughs> right? <laughs> David Koresh. Dated Dad, myself. I heard that joint in a minute. David Koresh was David a wild nigga. David Koresh, man. Jim Jones, David Koresh. David Koresh was a wild nigga. If you if you don't know who David Koresh is, do your Googles. I Google. remember watching that shit do at fucking Google. um at school. Like they had the damn like that shit was on the news and shit when they were like, um, I guess over trying to ransack his career, his compound and shit. That shit was wild. I remember that yeah. shit like yeah. And it was it, it's funny because I mentioned the '90s documentary a couple of times back yeah. in several episodes ago, and they brought that shit up like how big that shit was and how the feds that shit like, was big. Yeah, that stand like, off lasted for like, like forty fed, days or something. Like set their fucking house on fire and shit like without without provocation type shit. You know what I mean? And oh, the I way don't it think seemed, I knew that part. well, he was actually shooting on the backside, but the way it seemed is like the news is. I mean, the feds just killed all the motherfucking people and shit but he was actually he was on some fuck shit like he was on some like uh, mass genocide shit like on the inside like if y'all yeah a certain time and they knew that they had intel so they were trying to go in and like you know what i mean breach it before all that shit happened but that shit was crazy so he actually set the crib on fire and all that, that shit was crazy but it was like on uh on tv for the first time like people had never seen no shit like that so bro i think it's like mad wild that people it happens every day though. It happens on social media. Like people are just that gullible. Like people will hmm. follow anybody that's, you know, yeah, people like, will follow friend, anybody that's charismatic. Yeah. Like tell you like, yo, drink, like I watched the Jim Jones shit and it was just like, you drink. So for y'all who don't know, again, do your Googles. Um, I'm not talking about the rapper Jim Jones. I'm talking about the cult leader Jim Jones. Oh, we ain't talking about dipset. <laughs> no dip set. That's a cool no too, dip set. Not <laughs> we not gonna get you to wear a, a, a wallet chain. We talking about a nigga who had motherfuckers drinking Kool Aid to send themselves over to the other side and be free. Like yeah. people had their kids and everybody. They like plan the time to like drink this Kool Aid. Yo, these cult leaders, like motherfucking, what's my man? Uh, from the uh seventies, uh, the uh, killer dude. So uh. Charles, yeah, Charles, Charles Manson, Manson ain't killed nobody. He just had motherfuckers yeah, killed for exactly. him. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like, it's all about charisma. Like, one thing you're going to hear is, like, charisma. That's what they have. They just oh, have yeah. this charisma that have you to do anything. Mm-hmm. And, like, I pray to God I don't ever find nobody with that type of charisma ever. For sure. You know what I mean? That shit crazy. Um, Out of, out of uh, back to Diddy, though, the last question I had about, no, I had two questions about Diddy. Actually, out of all the women Diddy has has been with that we know of, which one could you see Diddy being with the most? Because you know he put some little uh, he said something under one of uh, J Lo pictures and motherfucking A <laughs> Rod came oh, through yeah. like skirt. Nope, eh, eh, don't even try it, bro. Well, who you think he should he should have been with just? Based on what you know, we on the outside looking in, of course, so we don't know their relationships. But I mean, I, I who think, you think Kim. He got well. I mean, he got three kids by her, well, shit, four really. I'd probably Kim. I think Kim was the soulmate that he just didn't didn't maximize on. He got four kids. I mean, three by his, you know biologically or whatever. But yeah, he take on you know he take care of Quincy and call Quincy his son. So yeah, I think Kim was probably the one. Yeah, I think. Um, I really liked him and J Lo together. Chance mom fine too though. I, I I like I I don't see her very much, but um I liked him and J Lo together. I thought like as far as like music royalty type shit, I liked him and J Lo together. Yeah, I mean it was like, a good. They were good, you know. Good I liked couple, him I guess. and J Lo together. I I would love to see J Lo with some uh black babies. That, oh yeah, that, that I'm about to say that she got that. kids, but she got twins. Yeah, she got twins by Mark Anthony, and he looked like Skeletor. He does look. He's a funny looking fella, a little short, <laughs> little fucker too. <laughs> I think uh, A Rod might be uh, J Lo's um, Russell Wilson. They seem pretty good together. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, man. You think did he ever settle down though? You think he I learned his lesson 50. or what? He old as hell. He need to. Why he need to? He fifty. What that mean? You need somebody to grow. You gonna get old. You need to grow some. Have somebody to grow old with. All that shit don't matter when you when you old and can't do shit for yourself. You need somebody to love you. Uh, but it's different when you old and you got money, and you got is people it? do stuff for you. Yeah, it is. Not really. Yeah, it is. Not really. It'd be it's different still, when you need somebody to take care of like you. Can't, yeah, like, for sure. Money can't but, do everything. But he I mean, can get him he another. Can. He can get him another Cassie and be with her for. 
10 years and yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I that think, shit is different. Like, I, I personally know. think he going to settle down with the next thing smoking. I feel like the the next relationship serious kind of relationship he get into, I think he going to settle down me personally. I think that's what he going to do. Not that I think he has to, but I think that's what he he is going to do. Mm-hmm. Cuz he has, I mean, in order to get all of your your baby mothers um to communicate and you know what I mean and do all that like you got to be a pretty good dude for the most part and they got to be pretty good women so that means you had a lot of good women I feel like a billion help. from the but from the outside looking in you done had some pretty good women the only one I don't really see in the mix that much is kind of like uh uh Christian mom I mean not Christian mom Justin mom Misa Hilton yeah I don't see her that much but still they they all get along so. You know what I'm saying? Like you didn't had your 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 fair share of of decent women, Diddy. It might be that time, or get you a boyfriend or whatever, because you know what the rumors are. Get you somebody, because you know you can only be dancing around here so long with these women. And don't get you no twenty something year old. Get you somebody at least in her late thirties. <laughs> Like at least in her late thirties. Don't go get no other twenty year old to feed your ego. You already did that with Cassie. You led her into her thirties and now she out screwing the pool boy. So Diddy, um just the whole Diddy situation is litter shit. Uh nah, shit. Shut R. P. to Kim Porter. Yeah, I think it's shit too. Rest in peace, Kim Porter. Diddy, I know you hurting, and like I said, you took a, a double whammy. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, you know, never live your life in a coulda, shoulda, woulda type place. You know what I'm saying? You get you another good one, you know, wife it up, man, wife it up. Um, uh, so, so weirdness. So, so Kodak Black, who I'm sure had a bunch of vaccinations and is <laughs> autistic. Um, this little way, he was in, uh, Club Live in Miami and, you know, he was posted all on the blog saying, where Lil Wayne at? You a maggot. You should have died when you was a baby, which seems super random. And we, we on the outside looking at it. So we don't know what's going on. And as you know, resume came in to defend her daddy. Uh, um, did you say resume? Yeah, that's what they be calling the resume and refrigerator. Holy shit. Regine, Regine don't play about her daddy. Um, so she came in with the swiftness and said, you new little rappers need to start giving props and respect to the goat. My father don't bother nobody. He won't even react to what you said. This man be in his own world. So leave him the fuck alone. Um, Kodak Black responds in a video. Being Kodak Black, looking like the autistic version of Crazy Eyes from Orange is the New Black. And he says it ain't no beef between him and Wayne. Wayne was supposed to show up at the club and show him some love. And he said it wasn't no beef because him and Wayne got a song together. But then he goes on to be shady and say, why would I touch Lil Wayne? He getting old, bruh. Uh... I, what I look like putting my hands on Lil Wayne, I'm like 180, basically implying that he can beat Lil Wayne ass. Right. Uh, then he proceeds to call Regine a little bald headed girl. Um, Toya responded to that by saying, fuck you, boy. And then he responds to Toya and say, if I didn't have a girlfriend, I would fuck the shit out of you. Oh, um, Lil uh, Kodak Black talking real reckless out here. Um, and it, it do seem like a little bit less respect. Um, to the OGs these days with these little weird drugged up niggas. What 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 you think about this? This is just all weird to me. Yeah, like the way it came about. Weird and random. Kodak Black's a weirdo. Like he's, he's he is. He's a fucking odd looking. He's funny looking. Like he's funny talking. Funny talking. Funny he acting. Just retarded a little bit. Like he got like a little mind. Retarded, retarded a little. He might got like a little Asperger's or something. Yo, I was just like, do he have a development to relay, delay, like, on some real shit? Like, does he suffer from some type of yeah, autism? Probably got, motherfuckers or, be having Asperger's and shit. And, like, niggas yeah. be thinking it'd be autism, but that shit be Asperger's, too. Asperger's I thought Asperger's, Asperger's was too. a form of autism. Nah, it's, I don't think so. I think it's on. I, it's associated, but it's just, like, some type of brain development. I don't know. Don't yeah, I line. always I thought it was on the autism spectrum. Um, I think that it is, but y'all y'all are correct us if we're wrong. I know you will. Um. But, you know, it's kind of like, 
it wasn't no beef and Wayne wasn't going to say nothing. But now you didn't diss my, my baby mama and my kid. Like, I don't know how that's handled, like, in the celebrity world. Yeah, you got to fuck that nigga up. Yeah, it's kind of like, what do you do? You know what I'm saying? Like, because in the regular world, like, you at least get hands put on you. Yeah, and Wayne got you know plenty of goons that could touch that little nigga if, they need, if need be. Yeah, really. He really could. Yeah. He really could. I, it, it, they do have a song together, and I don't know. Like, it, it seems super wild. So, I don't know what be going on with these little drugged up rappers. Uh, oh. <laughs> Yo, Kodak Black told the told the chick on the Instagram Live <laughs> that she he got some, some barbecue Instagram out the so front. The nigga got some, like, Oh, I remember when he showed his dick on Instagram. Oh, wow. I oh, I, I want to throw up still. He was in the shower. He had his phone in the shower. He was butt naked. That nigga, niggas is fucking weird, bro. Niggas wild. And it won't, like, nigga, if you're going to show something, at least, like, have it be on, like, some safari levels. Like, you showing regular ass small dick, like, <laughs> limp dick. On- <laughs> yo, yo, Old put that worm in this place. Nigga. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, Polly Pocket Penis having ass nigga. Don't be showing that shit. At least if you're going to be disrespectful, at least have something to show. Nigga said that shit. She was, she said, <laughs> that shit was just regular dick. <laughs> uh, nigga just got underwear dick. That's just. <laughs> yeah, damn, baby. You ain't even got that warm it up. You been taking a cold bath? Fuck. Ah, shit. The pool was cold. You nah, got damn. out. Everything is fucked up out here. <laughs> Oh man. Underwear you think Lil, you think you think uh Wayne probably weigh what? About one ten, one twenty, if that <laughs> Buck thirty at a, on a good day. If he out there ate a burger or something. <laughs> you think Wayne probably vegan too. He give me that vibe. That like, nigga ain't vegan. Wayne ain't on he probably know what a vegan, vegan is. <laughs> he would be like, What's a vegan? What's a vegan? I don't know. Is it on Sports Center? Right. That's all. <laughs> Oh, you think Kodak could beat Wayne? Like, if it was just a regular fight, you think he could beat Wayne? I, Wayne, that shit, Wayne don't, I, Wayne, I've never been scared of Wayne. You know what I'm saying? Like, in terms of, like, he doesn't seem like a physically imposing <laughs> Intimidated fella. at all. Yeah, like, I don't know. Like, he, nah, he like, Wayne like 5'3", but not for nothing, Kodak like 5'6", you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, them niggas yeah. are little bitty niggas, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Um, I doubt it. <laughs> Kodak might get winded, though. Shit, we ain't getting winded. Them <laughs> niggas both. That's them, true. Them no, niggas you both right. smoke gobs and gobs of weed and shit. Them you niggas. right. And Wayne hair falling out, so we don't know what's going on yeah, with Wayne. Man, ain't no telling what the fuck Wayne got going on. Damn it, man. Oh, man, I hope they don't fight. But uh, somebody need to touch Kodak yeah, up. Just a little bit. Tap his chin just a little bit. Put him in his place. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't want I don't want no gun violence or nothing yeah, like that. But sometimes a nigga just need to get yeah, the chin checked. Yeah, get Mac on the Mac Man big as hell. Yeah, that's true. That's true. He's still short too, but he big. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, Kodak dissing Lil Wayne is litter shit. Mm, I'm cool. Lit. It's cool. <laughs> Could have been better, but it's lit because it's content. But that's about it. Yeah, that's about yeah, it. Because it, it was random. Like, give us some backstory or yeah. what drug you was on or something. Wayne is a great man. Like he's just fucking. He's just. I don't know. I was listening to some old Wayne the other day. Uh. That nigga is fucking crazy, man. That motherfucker is that bitch could rap, boy. You hear me? That I feel like I feel like Carter Five still supposed to be getting play, and it's not. Oh yeah, that shit dope. That shit was great. Yeah. That shit was great. I love that album. I don't think like Music it, I don't is feel like it had disposable, man. So it's not. It's yeah, like it's it just is. if you ain't Drake and Cole, Drake. or you know what <laughs> like, I mean. If you ain't Drake or Cole, like you know what I mean, like well, it's really Beyonce not. Said somebody, like, you're not yeah. really getting that burn like that no more. You know what I mean? Like you're right. I'm ready, ready for Rihanna album to come out though. I'm interested to hear what that shit is. Yeah, I'm interested. She gonna have. I think I'm gonna see her when she go whenever she go on tour with this album. I think I'm gonna see her. I have I've never seen Rihanna. I saw um, her in concert. It was the Kanye West. It was the fucking. Um, the album with la da 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 yeah. good life tour huh good life tour i don't know, I don't know. I don't know. She, was, she was opening up for him though. so right. that was several years ago um but it was like i think umbrella was out then or some shit oh like that. that's that good girl gone bad I, it had just come out of some shit i think yeah. she yeah she was the act before him and shit that was a dope oh, show she, 
Yeah, that she wasn't even into her swag bag yet. She had, she was just getting into it. It was after the Chris Brown shit. Mm-hmm. She was start going with this bad girl image type thing. Yeah, got the black bob. Stop looking like baby uh, Beyonce when she was doing that pondery play. She had this one song. Her first album that was crazy, or second album. I gotta look that shit up. Shout out yeah, to this podcast to- for fucking jogging my memory <laughs> on music. <laughs> and shout out to uh, Rihanna. Yeah, she I love you, Rihanna. You a sexy fucker. Uh, <laughs> um, she don't be wearing no bra though. Her titties. I'm worried about her titties. Why are you worried about them? Because them shits gonna fall after a while. She got money. Them shits ain't gonna fall. That's true. And if not, it'll be a lot of people to catch them. I'll catch them, Rihanna. I love Rihanna. <laughs> I love everything about Rihanna. Yeah. Shout out to Rihanna. Oh, <laughs> um. So what we say about that? We said that shit was. You said it was lit. I think it was, we said it was lit. Um, so let's. Uh, we were talking, right, Rihanna. <laughs> no, yeah, we were Rihanna's talking lit. about Kodak Black. Oh uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> how do we get hey, on Rihanna. fucking Rihanna from Kodak Black? Hey, that's how it works. Out yeah, here. <laughs> I have no idea. I cannot tra- trace it. Uh, all back. roads lead to Rihanna. Oh. Her titties. <laughs> um. So DJ Self debuted a new hairline. Um, and DJ, we, we, we talked about hairlines on this podcast. DJ self spoke, spoke out on IG talking about people was hitting him in the DMs telling him look, he looked good versus talking about it in public in the comments and shit. Um, he talking about tell me I look good publicly. Don't be hitting me on the low. But then he also said he understands how it feels when girls get new butts and boobs and then all the like niggas is on them and shit. Cause I basically, I guess he basically saying like all of the women is on him now that he got these new hairlines as a, it's not just a hairline. Let's just say black- that like it's a whole fucking, whole fucking fade that he has. <laughs> like it's not just a line. It's a whole goddamn hair. Like, no, he's got a whole right. top top half of hair yeah it's covering his entire Them hair plugs it's a, it's not yeah. it ain't even a plug it's a fucking it's like some glue shit you think like, it's a lace yeah it is it's gotta no be. don't say it's a yeah, lace it i'd rather it be plugs tell. than a lace it's a whole different grade of hair than he got damn yeah that shit is, i that thought shit it was the piece. plugs i didn't think it was a lace no that how, shit is a so piece so as a black male how do you feel about men getting plugs and or lace fronts i'm totally against it <laughs> I'm a bald Flex, nigga, like, so like I'm that. a nigga that has no hair, that has, hasn't had hair for a very long time. I, Bro, don't ever show up with a whole have no fear. head of hair. You have, have yeah. no fear. And that shit I just feel happen. like black men are in at an advantage. Unless your head just, you know what I mean? Like, unless your head is just fucked up shape. Like, you can go bald and you can still kill it. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Like, nigga, I've been yeah. bald for, for fucking longer than I have not been bald. <laughs> so, <laughs> so shit, like, nah. And, and I, I definitely had my, uh, my way with the ladies. You know what I mean? Have you ever been envious of niggas with hair as a black yeah. man? I know I mean, white yeah, men go of course through you that. Were, like, you know what I mean? Really? Like, my, Tell like, me about my it. My best friend got super dude. My fucking kids, like, my son got, like, my kids got, like, I had a decent grade of hair, but them niggas' hair is, like, retarded. You know what I'm saying? Like, super wavy. Like, my youngest has got, like, that nigga got the stupid hair. Like, the goddamn, like, he got, I saw like, when the, he put all that grease on that shit that time. Yeah, but nah, that shit is <laughs> fire, though. Like, that nigga got, like, super duper curly hair. Like, you know what I mean? Like, them bouncy curls and shit. And I'm like, eh, I be hating like a motherfucker. Like, he got a haircut <laughs> on Friday. Shit was fire. I'm like, goddamn. My, um, my best friend was like, shit, this nigga shit is retarded. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, hey, if you had hair, well, how you think you how you think you'll rock that shit? You had an Odell Beckham curl. Oh no, nah, I just have a, a nice Caesar. You know what I mean? A a nice Caesar. Because I mean, I had like I said, like my mama got good hair, and uh, my daddy shit was just nigger as fuck. So like, I had different type of hair. Like my way, I had like waves on the top, waves in the back. My size was wild, but um, I was able to, you know what I mean, sporting waves and shits down. But um, hell yeah, nah, just a dark season with you know what I mean, the waves spin, <laughs> waves on swim, so they hate on him type shit. No oh, word. Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> oh, I think like, I think like, man, I seen that nigga DJ Self. He was at CIAA on nigga I follow on Instagram. And shit. <laughs> Did you go to CI? Cause CI was this weekend. Nah, too. I ain't. My son's birthday was see it this weekend. Oh, true, 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 so, true, 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 true. You did say that. Yeah, my bad, nah, my bad. Shit ruined it for me. But, um, but nah, I seen like nigga, he was in the DJ booth with the nigga and that shit looked like some goddamn, it looked like, you know, like them, that cow print and shit that girls used to wear back <laughs> in the day, like that fake cow, faux cow. Yeah, shit. That's yeah. how that shit looked like. That shit was mad texturally off. That shit was, Word. that shit was like a, like, <laughs> like a cantaloupe. Like that shit looked like, this, this shit wasn't right, man. It was like I black cantaloupe. 
I, I'm like, listen, I, I'm laughing you out. You come around me with a lace front. Yeah, right? not you, you personally. Like, I'm just saying people. From, men. It's like you. It's one extreme. Like you can't have like a super duper one against the grain today, or for years, and then can pop up with. I mean, but I. I mean, if you wear, if you, if you. I guess get in front of the joke. It ain't really nothing. You know what I'm saying? I mean, niggas can't really kill you too much. I mean, nah, niggas still going to kill yeah, you though. every kill. time. Like that's some shit. You're not going to be able to live that. Like niggas goals is going to be to get you out of that nigga, shit. That, that shit, shit like so corny. Dollars. Like nigga, nigga, the, the barbershop I go to and shit, them niggas be doing mad, like weirdo shit, like mad, like dies and perms and all type of shit. But so are barber barbers said, learning how to do that now? Yeah, my barber, I, my, my barber going to the, the uh, 400 on that shit. 400? Correct. How long that shit stay on? Because lace fronts don't stay on that long. I don't know. I ain't ask all that. I ain't really getting fired when niggas. <laughs> you talk. like, I, I ain't want to seem interesting. Yeah, like, I can put you, I can do it for you for 250. Nah, I'm straight playing. <laughs> I'm good. Hey, listen, y'all got to stop, like, I, um, y- y'all barbers got to stop putting that Beijing on kids' hair. That shit look mad crazy. Niggas be doing it that shit. It look crazy on Lord. anybody. That shit be doing that. That shit is crazy. Like, niggas be, that's what I'm saying. Like, niggas be in the barbershop sitting under the dryer and shit. You know what I mean? Like, that shit, like, my barbershop that I go to is like a salon. Like, these niggas be charging like $80 and shit for, like, Beijing and shit. Like, that shit crazy, man. The whole, the barbershop game is, like, barbers it's is totally the new different. Instagram honeys. Facts. I feel like, you know, I feel like guys today, you and your girl taking just as much time to get dressed. For sure. Yeah. And get yourself together and get your hair done. You can't just run out and get a haircut no more. You want to get your shit done. Yeah, I'm cool. Like, it's crazy. Like, times is, times is like changing. I'm cool with times changing, but just some shit just ain't right. Some like, shit niggas don't with need to change. lace front is just not cool, right? What's that? I'm trying to think of the specific word that, bro. I think, it, um, I was on, I was about to call that shit a harness. A, a toupee? Nah, it's, it's a fucking. Nah, that's the Trump shit, toupee. A harness. I don't know. It's, it's gonna come to It ain't to no damn later. harness. Yeah, it's not a harness. It's like a saddle. But it, I mean, you might as well saddle up your fucking hair. <laughs> yeah, My damn. saddles. Waiting. Brush. Come. Shit, trash. Or come in. Hey, everybody, <laughs> on first day. <laughs> <laughs> everybody, first dates, go swimming. Males, females, everybody go swimming. Or just on take first a bath. Day. Like, yo, go take a bath real fast. Take a shower. <laughs> <laughs> yo, go take a shower. Wash your hair. Get caught in the rain on your first yeah. date just to see what you work. Shit, that shit ain't hard nowadays. <laughs> rain every day. Hey, and I still stand by Drake has a lace front beard. Nah, that's I, he got I a, saw that shit official. once and I thought it was, they showed that shit peeling. Mm, and that's, and, that's and, I, and I saw that shit once. And then I'll be looking at that shit. That shit a lace. That shit a lace. Nah, that shit official. That shit. He, he nah, got that a, shit a lace like a, a bitch. Beard. I'm I'm going with lace front. You're not changing my mind. Drake has a fucking lace beard. Sometimes that shit be thick. And then sometimes that yeah, shit be he normal. Jewish. That nigga Jewish and black. That nigga got like that type. Like his 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 hair is. I'm that not type. saying his shit don't grow, but what I'm saying is on a day to day basis, your shit ain't gonna change that much. No, if you look at that nigga like back in the day, like when he was young and like how he used to have the bare face, like his whole face is like hair. Like he got a thick ass mustache, like his daddy. He got he got that daddy ass mustache. His mustache is wide thick. And then his beard, he he got that beard. I'm that's I ain't even gonna, like no homo type shit, but that's that's his beard. I can tell. Well, you can tell when niggas got like that crush your Monday, going on but I jeans. think I think that's a lace. I think it's a lace, it and I'm lace. I'm sticking by that shit. Um, the male lace fronts and uh the the lace front male community, including DJ Self. Dang, and I thought it was hair plugs. Nah. Is hair plugs okay? Um, or oh, is both of them shit swag? I mean. Nah, man, that shit be looking crazy, man. Like you, you look stupid. Them hair don't never look quite right. Nah, I think Marcus Houston thin. got something. He said what? He either got plugs. I think uh, they posted a picture on the blogs today with Marcus Houston. Uh, Marcus Houston got. Oh, engaged. he used to do the paint though. Bro used to do that Beijing like. Yeah, but Fox now shit. he got hair. I'm gonna send you the photo if you didn't see it. Like it's hair now. That's why I was just oh, like, I believe it. I mean, uh, they so spin I'm, that bag. You know what I'm saying? Like niggas. I wonder if it's like, plugs or a lace though. I can't do it. I'ma just chill. Just 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 go bald gracefully, black man. Like you still look good. You still look good. Let let me he'll be your leader. Yeah. You know what I mean? Let, let yeah, y'all do all right. Uh new hairlines, leadership. I can't fuck with it. 
<laughs> I can't either. I can't either. And I try to be open minded, but that shit is trash. That shit is trash. So we definitely going shit on that one. Um, last but not least, uh, James Harden teased the new track by, uh, Meek Mill. Um, and the track, uh, appears to be aimed at Nicki Minaj. Um, and, uh, it's a, you know, the Instagram only gives you like one minute, but, uh, Meek raps, the shit is beyond me. You were supposed to be my Beyonce. Now you this nigga's fiance. Fuck you mean. You feel a connection. He listens to you. What this nigga wears Balenciaga's with the bootcut jeans. <laughs> Why is that so funny to me? That's what, <laughs> what the fuck you losing your mind? Hey, yo, call my fucking phone back. Every time you post this nigga, I want to smoke this nigga. We just broke up last year. How you know this nigga? You was cheating on me. You was creeping on me. Do you think this is aimed at Nikki? Sounds but like Meek it. But Meek said, it do to me too. You know, Meek said, I've been with six girls in the past year. <laughs> but you wasn't with six girls yeah, in the past was a year. Girl. That was your girl. And you know how Instagram is. Hey, listen. FBI, CIA, PD, any law enforcement, y'all just need to get social media investigators on y'all team. They gonna bring up everything. They pulled up the picture of the nigga, zoomed in with Nikki and the nigga posing with the Balenciaga and the, the Balenciaga shoes and the bootcut jeans. Like the internet works fast. Yeah, boy. They ain't got shit else to do. Shit else to do but pull receipts. Ain't you can't do shit on the low no more. You can't say shit. You remember back in the day, like we listened to shit like from Ho for back in the day, and now we just getting what was going on. Yeah. Cause he used to say little shit. Now niggas is tracking shit down immediately. Yeah. Immediately. Do you think uh Meek actually want Nikki back or his ego just may be a little bruised because she moved on so quickly? Uh, shit. I don't. Know. I probably, probably just a little bit of both. But I think he probably just ego bruised. You know, niggas always gonna take shots when it's their girl and shit, like their old girl and shit. You know yeah. what I mean? Especially in this internet culture, and especially when you got a platform. You know what I mean? But yeah, I'm pretty sure he probably still want that old thing back. She that probably broke up with thing. that nigga for. You think she broke up with me? Hell yeah. <laughs> I'm boring him. No, I'm just talking. Y'all hear him yelling and shit. <laughs> um, that, yeah. Um, I don't know. Like, Nikki give me that type of chick that always need a nigga. Like, she always needs somebody. Like, based on what we know, she hasn't been single since she was like 18. Yeah, she still kind of broke up with that nigga. She was the biggest star. Like, he was going through all that shit. Probably she ain't know that they was going to, you know what I mean? He's yeah. going back and forth to court with that nigga and shit. She probably ain't know, she ain't know what that shit was going to leave. Yeah. She probably like, I'm out. Yeah. I, you know, I just feel like it's, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, how you get them is how you lose them. You know what I'm saying? So it's quite possible the same way she was doing extra with you when she was with Safari. She was doing extra with that nigga while she was with you. Good point. Because they moved pretty quickly. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. <laughs> that's just the lesson people that how you get them is how you lose them thing is not false it happens more often than not so remember that but i think his ego might just be a little bruised too because you know you know nikki was supposed to be i guess his beyonce because she was the biggest chick in the game you know as far as like rap is concerned and all that um i don't know i don't know that they make a good couple or not to be completely honest Cause Nikki just seems so fake with a lot of things that she do. Like it ain't authentic. Like she do it for the camera. Like when she was with Nas, so it was just like, damn, no, Nas was after Meek. Yep. And then it was this nigga. Mm. Who? Yeah, I don't know. Um, <laughs> but I understand how that can feel. Meek, hope you get it together and you know. Leave the Bernices and all them alone. Find you, find you a good chick that ain't been passed around. Not that Nikki was passed around, but you know what I'm saying. It seemed like all these niggas fuck with the same six chicks. For sure. Just, just, just get you something. You got your life going in a different way. Get you a, get you a respectable chick. Get you an actress or something. I don't know. Uh, this Meek Mill song you think is gonna be a dope song? Uh, you like what you heard so far? 
I don't. I could. It was kind of distorted, so I can't really hear a lot. Yeah. But, I mean, I'm pretty sure it'll be okay. Yeah. I, I, I'm interested to hear the song. Um, but is this whole if it is directed at Nikki, is it lit or shit? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I guess lit. Uh, I'll go with lit only because uh, I think Nikki then took like some shots at him a little bit. Um, I always like when uh. Rap beef, whether romantic or platonic, creates content as far as music. So I'm interested to see what music can come from this. So I'm going to give it a lit. Uh, let's move into some letter. Let, let's move into a listener letter. Uh, let's go into eight shit and two cents. Ain't shit is two and two cents is our listener letter segment where we give advice to listeners who clearly don't care about taking advice from people who drink a lot or who drink hot toddies. And got snotty. And Google hot, hot snotty. Hot snotty. <laughs> hot snotty. <laughs> but I persevere, baby. I'm persevering through here. Hot um, snotty. I, our letter <laughs> is a is a pretty simple one today. Um and I appreciate it, and that's why I picked this one, because it's 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 slightly simple. Um, the letter today says, my homeboy and I were listening to your show when you were talking about sequels and reboots. We got into a heated debate about Will Smith and Martin Lawrence. My question is very simple, yet very difficult at the same time. What show is better and why? Mm. The Fresh Prince or Martin the TV show? And that comes from Drew C. Drew C., what up? What up, um. Drew? Great question, actually. That is yeah. quite simple, but incredibly <laughs> complex. Um, because right. so, so both of them were hip hop based, right? But I think Martin more so, obviously, because of the fact that it wasn't in Bel Air, it was in Detroit, and he had a whole, his own radio show. And you know what I mean? True. Um, but I think but both of them were first radio. of their kinds, I think, like more so Fresh Prince, though, because that shit kind of came out the blue, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like, and it was, it was super, super monumental. Shout out to Quincy Jones. Cause he's a fucking crazy mind. Cause he created that show. But, um, yeah, it was just, it was a, it was a crazy concept. Like you, you had this bougie ass black family living in Bel Air. I had never even heard of Bel Air before. Um, yeah, granted I was true. maybe eight or nine. So you know right, I mean? exactly. not, not too much sure what, what I had heard. I of, never but, heard of West Philadelphia born and raised. Either. Yeah. Great. Yeah. The theme song was, <laughs> Theme song was better. However, Martin had a couple dope theme songs, but, um, all right. So yeah. I'm going to do, I'm going to do Will Smith and you do Martin, even though I don't, I'd rather do Martin, but whatever. Um, what you mean? so I'm going to just, cha- I'm going to, cha- I'm going to cape for, for Will Smith. Um, Will shit was just dope. Cause like I said, like it was, why are you going to tell me who I got to cape for? All right. Well, yeah. Who, who do you want to cape <laughs> for? I don't know. Yeah. I got to do my pros and cons just like you. Just, just do your pros and cons right, and we'll talk for, it out. Pros for, Pros for fucking Will Smith, I guess. Um, <laughs> it was dope. Like I said, it was monumental, very groundbreaking. Um, I I learned um, some new geography for for Bel Air. Um, okay. Damn, that's crazy. I mean, he used to have a, he always used to have a stupid J's on. Yeah. Um, but Martin used to have the stupid J's on too. Yeah, Martin Mar- Martin sneaker game was mean. He used to have more than like he used to wear Grant Hills and shit. But it was a little bit more like it was past that time. Um, but I think Will Smith kind of just broke down like it was Will Smith. What Will Smith did was he became a commercial success, right? Like, so he yeah, brought in true. like black people to white people's homes. You know what I mean? Like, so that's true. the whole Bel Air aspect of it. So like it was like this bougie lawyer family. And it, I mean, it was still good, you know, obviously f- to have those role models and those significant figures like Mr. Uh, you know, Uncle Phil and shit. Uh, yeah. But it, he was still hood. Like it was still like an implant to this this society, but it showed like black people while still being bougie, still black, you know what I'm saying? Like you can't yeah, get away from that true. shit. You know what I'm saying? Like you yeah. can't, you still, however much money you got, wherever you live, you still got to be black, uh, with, you know, police and Carlton yep. and all that shit like that. So. And to, uh, Carlton was a fucking uncle Tom Super and shit uncle like Tom, that. You know what I mean? Super and they uncle had to Tom. force will to go like the college. And like, I think that the, another dope thing about, about fresh Hillary Prince. Was fine too. Hillary, Hillary, Hillary. Was fine. and Tatiana, boy, yeah, like I used to love Tatiana Ali. You hear me? Yes, yes, and she grew up to still be fine. I always <sighs> used to think of uh Tatiana Ali and Lisa Turtle 
because they kind of look the same uh, from um, Lisa Turtle. Was, Say by the bell. Yeah, Lisa Turtle. But she fun. grew up to be uh, Lisa Turtle. Is Tatiana looking did, crazy. What's crazy is I don't find her very attractive as an adult. Like she was way really? finer when she was a kid to me. Like I thought when she grew <laughs> That's up. That's a like, wild statement. <laughs> When I was a kid, when I was a kid and she was a right, kid, she exactly, was way clarify. fine. And I always thought like she was fucking like Muhammad Ali daughter and shit, but she wasn't. But um, <laughs> I thought you she thought was. I never knew anybody was Ali? named Ali besides Muhammad Ali. So okay. I just figured like, oh, that's probably his daughter. But um, she never, I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't she didn't age Farrakhan well. I'd like for that. her to have, have had to, but. Um, she aged better than Lisa Turtle, For though. sure. Lisa Turtle look a hot That ass. motherfucker was so fine to me, Lisa Turtle. Good Lord. I used to let the nigga. Who looked better, Lisa Turtle or Tatiana Ali? At, in the, at that time? At that time. I'm going to go with Lisa Turtle. Yeah, you might got to go with Lisa Turtle. Lisa Turtle by uh, a, a turtle's pace. Uh, fucking some <laughs> shit. She was, Lisa was bad. Because she was like, she used to, yeah, she was bad. Yeah, Lisa Turtle. Yeah, Lisa Turtle was bad. But, um, but for Martin, think- Martin was just ill. Like, Martin was just, I got to say Martin. Because Martin just had like a, uh, like his whole cast was like, funny as fuck like i'm not saying everybody that, that, had a place i don't know but first first everybody had a place because yeah. think about it jeffrey was funny he always had his snide little comments yeah. right uncle phil was funny black aunt viv was super funny yeah uh light skin aunt viv she was okay but black aunt viv was black yeah she was yeah she like was she was fuck. super black yeah they fucking jazz was funny yeah jazz was dope carlton Hillary was, was funny Hillary Banks. Hillary. Will you marry? <laughs> Look very <Bow>. splat. <laughs> See, and the shit got quotables, you know what I'm saying? Man, like, I think the good thing about bro. Fresh Prince as well was that you got to look at the bougie shit, but you also got to look at the hood shit because he would go back to Philly. Mm-hmm. He would deal with not seeing his father. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So you got kind of a best of both worlds type thing. But going back over to Martin though, Martin was in shit, their though. cast, like, Tashina Arnold was fucking funny. Yeah. Fucking Cole was fucking funny. Every Tommy was fucking hilarious. Like, Random spoons. They got more, they got they they have more gut busting laughs. Like I can watch Fresh Prince and I can appreciate it and I still like the nostalgia yeah. comes in, but I can watch Martin and I still laugh, laugh. Like like the fucking yeah. when the nigga stole the C D and shit and they did the new jack shit. I like I every time I watch that shit, it's the very like it's the very first time. Martin kind of had real a guest too. Like they oh, had yeah. Biggie. Yeah, yeah, for sure. They like like they they had like Fresh Prince had guests too. But he, they also had Nia Long. So they did have Nia Long. Nia Long was they phew. did they did have Nia, Nia Long. Nia Long was that thing. Martin had Young Kenya Moore <sighs> when she was Mrs. That. Bozak. That's a killer. Yes, Kenya Moore was they a bad had Still they fine. had, I they I used to love um, I used to love when Gina and fucking Pam used to get they singing all singing in the background. <laughs> when that the big right episode over here, singing in the background. <laughs> and that, that was good. <laughs> that was a <it>, shit. <laughs> that was, that was a good what's episode. Your, okay, so boom. All what's right. your favorite episode of Martin? And your favorite episode of that you can remember. It's kind of hard to remember Fresh Prince episodes, but your favorite episode of Fresh Prince. See, and I think that's what's going to edge it out. Yeah, for sure. Because I think that, I'm yeah. going to tell you my favorite episodes of Martin that just come straight off the top of the dome. When Martin fought Tommy Hearns, when um Gina was going to the, um when Gina was trying to go to the class reunion and her yeah, face and shit was, got all fun. fucked up. Um, When she got her head stuck in that motherfucking uh, headboard. Um, the episode really where Martin, um, remember, uh, Pam was acting like Martin, oh, like she got man. hypnotized God or something. That shit, that was, funny shit was funny, bro. My like that shit was funny yeah. when Martin, hold on, let me finish getting my joints so up. Yeah. When, when, when Martin, um, was fighting the rat in Chilligan's Island. Yeah. When Martin went to go join the fucking convent or whatever that joint yeah. was called, the monk, the monks or whatever. That shit. Damn, hey, nigga save some joints. I know, right? Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. I'm gonna let you nah, be great. My favorite, my favorite by great. far is the um when the nigga had the, when they did, when they did the fucking with the one I mentioned earlier when the nigga stole the CD. He was trying to figure out who it was. 
Yeah. And they had that New Jack City shit, and they were sitting at that fucking table. Like, <laughs> With that the dog. reason it was so funny to me is because the nigga, the, the, if you look at that shit, the next time you look at it, I'm pretty sure you've seen it. But Tommy was fucking like weak. He was trying so hard not to laugh. Like he was over there sweating and shit. Like, because when the nigga had that dog, he was like, that sit down. That dog was funny. And the nigga as fell a over. Bitch. Nigga, Tommy lost it. That shit was funny as fuck, nigga. Like, that's my favorite fucking episode by far. Like, all, the big episode, obviously, um, it's mad episodes. I can't remember when Cole was froze at the door and shit. We had the pizza and shit where they had the blizzard and he, he went out with his pinto and shit. <laughs> that shit was funny. Um, I remember that Shanae was fucking with Kid and shit. Oh, Shanae and them. See, we didn't get yeah. into the characters yeah. it's that Martin, Martin used to Martin get into. What's, what's, what's your best Fresh Prince episode? Yeah. Uh... The, See, that's a little bit harder. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. They and it's not like they were bad. Yeah, they're not as at memorable. All. Um, yeah. I remember the one he was I singing like when, when, when Tatiana was singing in the cafeteria and, and Will and them was dancing in the background and shit. That shit was funny. Yeah. Um, yeah. When somebody. Will when, had Tyra Banks. Yeah. When, um, and when Carl, when Carlton got high and shit and they had that apartment. Remember that? He had got high and shit was tripping. When they was living in the pool house? Yeah, in the pool house, not the apartment. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, the, the sad one with his dad and shit, when he didn't want him and shit, that shit was a good one. Yeah, yeah, um, that was a good one. I'm trying one. to fucking remember. I don't know. Like, I remember the episode where, um, when Hillary Banks went, Jeffrey, when she died, when well, old boy died. That was funny. <laughs> that was funny when old boy died. Um, that episode, you remember Cutter. the episode where Jeffrey, um, that the rich lady was faking like she was the maid so she can uh fuck with Jeffrey and then he found out that she was rich and then he didn't want to fuck with her no more. What's the name from uh Yeah. That was what's the uh, name? Um from Amen. Yeah. Um Reverend, Thel- her Reverend name wasn't Thel- something's wife. I forgot her name. <laughs> Amen was the show too. Oh man, now I feel like I need to watch that too. What was that? The show was Amen, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Raleigh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mr. R- Raleigh Ra- yeah. And, and, um, yes, and yes, Deacon, and, yes, um, yes. 227. T- 227 still good- come on. I just saw that shit. Yeah. That, that shit come on Encore, I believe. That shit still fun. Shout out to Regina King and her Oscar. Hell yeah. She been around since Brenda Shout out and to been Jack working a. ever since. Jack A was fine. Shit. She was fine. <laughs> Sandra Clark. Yeah, Sandra Clark was bad. <laughs> it's fuck. Hey. Listen, I think that we kind of talked this. Yeah, Martin, through. Martin for the dub. And I think that kind of like, as far as people still working to this day, Tashina Arnold keep a job. Oh yeah, 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 for sure. She's always had a job. I can't remember a time where she didn't have a job that she wasn't on the show. Um, motherfucking what's the name is super famous now, bruh man, not bruh man, uh, hustle man. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Tracy Morgan. Tracy Morgan, yeah, he spawned a lot of stars out that shit. I mean, not yeah. That, so did I mean, so did fucking Fresh Prince, obviously. But I think Fresh yeah. Prince, like I can kind of encapsulate it. Fresh Prince was the first saw, time we saw hip hop on TV. You know what I mean? Yeah, like it was the first time, like you know, in in and he was the form. first rapper to kind of have a TV yeah, show. Yeah, like he set the tone. You know what I mean? Like and it and it because prior to that, like even with his title interview that he did. um, with um rap radar and shit like he was saying like that was his niche because as a rapper he was always looked as kind of corny you know what i mean so he was like Facts. he was able to transition his corny into cool like you know what i mean he was because yeah. he was he was around like his his corny was like hood corny but bel-air cool nigga you know what i'm saying so like Facts. it was kind of like you ain't got to be like a killer or a thug but you could still be hip-hop and still like live hip hop and breathe hip hop and like kind of indoctrinate that culture upon the masses. You know what I mean? So like his yeah. was the entrance in hip hop for, for that, like the comedic presence, you know what I'm saying? Like everything yeah. else was like Sanford and son and, you know, like your amen yeah, and shit, like right. kind of like your own more buttoned up, you know, black people and shit, which was, that was needed too. Cause at that time it was still, you know what I mean? Like, uh, like my daddy and them was like that, you know what I'm saying? Like that old yeah. school comedy and that shit like that. But like this yeah. was the usher. And son was funny as fuck. You said what? I said San Francisco was funny. Hell well. yeah. Just, oh, shout out to Rollo, man. The nigga Rollo, I forgot his real name. He just passed a couple of days ago. The nigga that played oh, Rollo, yeah. The nigga played Rollo on, um, San Francisco. Wait. The old man? Oh, Rollo. Damn. Yeah. He still, he should have been pretty old. How was like he? Like 81. Okay. Yeah. Oh, shout out to my Uncle Tim, man. He passed away a couple of days ago. 
Well, rest in passed peace, away Uncle like Tim. a week ago. His funeral was over the weekend. Shout out to Uncle Tim. Sorry to hear that. Yeah. Rest in peace, Uncle Tim. Oh, it's Tim. all good. His stomach cancer rest is a bitch. Rest in peace, Uncle Huh. Fuck cancer. Facts. Um, I think that, you know, Fresh Prince might have, like, introduced the hip-hop, but I felt like hip-hop was more, like, a part of Martin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, Martin yeah. was hip-hop. Yeah, it was you know entrenched. I mean? like, yeah, the, yeah, I mean, but it was, like, it, was it, it had to be, like, Fresh Prince kind of, you know what I mean? Like, he kicked the door down because there was nothing on TV like that before. Like, it was nobody wearing Jordans and hip-hop gear and doing, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. with that that street edge, if you will, street quote-unquote street edge. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah. But Martin, yeah, it was it was steeped in fucking hip hop. So what? So what you going with? What you going with? Going what with you giving Martin. Drew? I'm going with Martin, just because yeah. the, the long stay of it. You know what I mean? Like just the 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 ripple effect that it had. Like because it can still be watched at this time. So yeah, I you know I gotta go with Martin as well. Just us talking through it. Um, that was a great question, Drew C. Just us so, talking so. through it. Um, definitely got to go with Martin because I just feel like Martin got more quotables. Martin has. You know, just more memorable shit. You know what I'm saying? If you tell somebody when Martin fought Tommy Hearns and his face was all fucked up, everybody know what that yeah. looked like. You know what I'm saying? Like, you ain't got to think hard to rattle off, uh, Martin. And, and you know, it's kind of like, oh, Mad Fresh Dog. Prince was like, Mad Dog came through? Yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. Uh, Mad and Dog, shout no out good. to, uh, uh, Roscoe, shout out to Shanene, shout out to my mama yeah, Biscuits, the fucking, shout out to, uh, 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 player from the Himalayas, Jerome, fucking shout my, out to oh, yeah, Angry my Man, favorite, I forgot, Miss like Jerry. my second favorite is fucking, uh, Karate Man, what's Karate Man name? Uh, Dragonfly Jones, when Dragonfly, Dragonfly Jones, Jones. Damn, shout out to King Beef, go King Beef, go King Beef, go King Beef, King Beef. Yeah, that's my homeboy, he's because I got a hair ass <laughs> chest and shit, so they just call me King Beef, but, uh, <laughs> fuck it, uh, yeah, Dragonfly damn. Jones, when that nigga was at the, fuck it, so, both episodes, when the nigga was, uh, when, when, when he owed the nigga some money and shit, he was doing the self-defense class at fucking, at Pam Crib. <laughs> <laughs> he beat the shit out of that nigga. Then when he beat him up at Dipsy's and shit, and then when he beat when he oh, beat the Nipsey, nigga up at the, uh, the but the nigga beat the nigga up at the ATM and shit. The nigga like it beat the fuck out of Martin. <laughs> and Martin, <laughs> yeah, and Martin posted up beside the, the ATM was hit nine one one on that. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga, that shit is the funniest shit in the fucking oh, world. Shit. To me. Shout yeah. out the Nipsies, bro. Shout out the Big Shirley. That nigga hit nine one one on the ATM. Nigga whooped him so bad, he ain't know what. <laughs> that bitch called nine one one from the ATM. <laughs> shit. Martin's stupid. Fuck. Hey, Drew, we both going with Martin. Let us know. You didn't tell us who who y'all was yeah. going for, so let me know who you went for. Um, Appreciate y'all listening. Great question. Good question. Um, that was a great question. Um, if if y'all want some advice from us or want to know what we think about some shit, write into the ancient show at gmail dot com, and that's the X where the I will be. For sure. And uh we may read your letter on the show. You ready to wrap this baby up? Let's put a button on it. All right, let's get into free smoke, free smoke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh free smoke is where we talk about uh personal hot button issues, anything for politics or petty. It could be anything we want to talk about. Um and today's topic is being res- financially responsible for family members. Um and I got this idea from uh it, it kind of hit me when uh, LeBron James, it was a clip of LeBron James um, show, uh, The Shop, good show. Uh, posted. And uh, he sat day. down, good. Uh, he sat down with uh, Meek Bill, Gerard Carmichael, Anthony Davis, 2 Chains, and a couple others to discuss whether or not they felt financially responsible for their family members. And um, although, you know, we are not, multi-millionaires over here you know you still have those those pressures us us regular people have those pressures um of being being responsible for not only your family but your extended family um and things like that um b i know that you've mentioned uh a couple times on this show that like you know you're you're kind of the you're the you are the breadwinner um for your family like how far does that extend mm. with you being the breadwinner? Uh, I mean, my parents, you know, they, I mean, they both retired and well, um, yeah, they retired. My dad still do like, you know, a little odd, well, not odd jobs. He still work, um, like part time and shit, but when shit get funky, you know what I mean? All roads lead to me, you know what I mean? And I mean, obviously I take care of my own family. Like I'm, right. my wife don't work. Well, she doesn't 
she works. She just stays at home with the kids, so she doesn't get a paycheck um, right. necessarily. But um, and I've been doing that for shit seven years. Shout out to me for doing that. Um, and shout out to you <laughs> for real. Shout out to um, me. Yeah, yeah. But um, but yeah. Even with that, like you know, what I'm saying like when shit, my mom and daddy need some additional shit. You know what I mean? Or, or like I don't know. Like my mama smoke weed, so like she'd be asking for bud and shit and. Don't necessarily have the money to be paying for it, so like, and I don't be wanting yeah. to charge my mom to smoke. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. so I just go and grab her some bud because I know she needed or whatever. So like, you know, just certain shit like that. Like, you know, when 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 things happen, like I ain't got no Christmas present or no birthday presents. And I mean, granted, they get my kids stuff. I won't say that, but like me personally, right. like, I ain't got no present in a long time. But I've always, you know, I still get presents and I do what I can when I can. You know what I mean? Like. Um, I think I took my yeah. whole family to the beach last year. You know what I'm saying? For like three, four days and shit. Took care of everything. So it's gratifying, but you know, sometimes that shit just becomes a, a bit of a stressor because, uh, you know, I mean, shit, I, sometimes you be wanting to be like, one, you want to say no or two, like, I damn, like, I am, I'm still the child too. You know what I'm saying? In some capacity, yeah. you throw a nigga something. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, but it is, I'm, yeah. I, I try to take it with a grain of salt and just, um, be appreciative that I'm able to, you know, um, take care of motherfuckers and shit. So, um, yeah. and I've been doing that pretty much all my life. So not all my life, that's not as true, but a good majority, a uh, majority good. of my adult yeah. life, I've been, you know what I mean? Taking care of my people and shit. So, I, you know, I, you know, I don't, I don't have, um, children. I'm not married and things like that. And, you know, I think that, um, for, for like my family or whatever, sometimes you, you kind of have um w- once you're the person who made it for lack of better words and I'm doing air quotes with made it um you know you, you kind of feel that um you know survivor's remorse oh yeah for sure type thing you know what I'm saying so like back in the day like up until probably like the past like really like 2 years or so you know I used to feel like you know if my family was having a hard time then it it was my responsibility to uh kind of jump in you know what i'm saying whether they asked me to you know or not you know what i'm saying so i ca- i kind of felt like that like i used to feel and and, and i don't want to um, put this out there like you know my family just be mad on my back asking me for shit because they don't you know what i'm saying but it's just like if you on the phone with your mom or your sibling or whatever and they complaining about you know something that they need in their life that they don't have you know what i'm saying you kind of feel like obligated you because you're just like Yo, like, I right, I'm gonna sit here and buy, you know, spend a hundred and sixty dollars on a pair of kicks, or I'm gonna go to a restaurant and spend a hundred dollars, you know, on drinks and food and all that shit, you know what I'm saying? And they and they might need some money for a light bill or, or something like that, you know what I'm saying? So I used to try to kind of, you know, balance that out, you know what I'm saying? But I think, you know. I got to a point where I started listening to needs and wants, you know what I'm saying? And kind of putting people that I love in a, in a position where they needed to think about what they were doing with their money. You know what I'm saying? Cause you run into a lot of situations where niggas do what they want with their money. And then they want to spend your money on their needs. They spend their money on their wants and they want to spend your money on their needs. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, I've, I've, I've always said this. I've said this numerous times on this, on this podcast that one of the smartest things my father ever told me was never let people know how much money you got or how much money you make. Never. And I took that to heart and I've never done that. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, I see like other friends and shit like that. Like they brag about like getting bonuses and shit like that. And they family like, where my shit? Like, but you wasn't in this cubicle, bro. You weren't in this office. You wasn't doing this construction. You wasn't doing. You were not shooting with me in the gym, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I had that survivor's remorse, and I'd be like, damn, you know, that's kind of fucked up. Like, I'll feel bad for doing shit, you know, for myself, knowing, like, that my family, like, needed shit. Because my family, you know what I'm saying? Like, for the most part, like, you know, they still in the hood, you know what I mean? Like, doing hood things, but they, I mean, they live a good life. It's not like they where we used to be, you know what I'm saying? But I know that, you know, out of them, I'm the one who... Went to college and got degrees and I make a, a pretty decent living and I can do whatever I want for myself. You know what I'm saying? But you do have that survivor's remorse sometimes. But, you know, in more recent times, 
I already told you, I get older. My patience ain't what it used to be. I don't care about a lot of stuff that, you know, like I used to care about, you know what I'm saying? So now like I really listen to like, you know, what they really need. Like, like my mom, you know, like instead of just like, like I got a lot of friends that just send they, send their parents money, like on a regular basis, which is great. You know what I'm saying? But it's like they spend that money on crazy stuff. Like my mom liked to go to bingo and like casinos and like buy shoes and, but like she, she one of them people Sound like, like something is, but here's the thing about, <laughs> here's the thing. I got money to do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know I mean, that's the difference. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't be buying stuff if you don't have the money to, you got, listen, one thing about me, my bill's going to be paid before anything is done. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's, that's period. Cause my goal is I'm, I'm, I never want to put myself in a situation where I have to depend on anybody else. I never want to put myself in a situation where, you know what I'm saying? My lights cut off or my whatever cut off because I dumped, did something dumb. Like that's not me. You know what I'm saying? Now, could my savings be thicker than it is? Probably. However, my bills is done. My, my, my bills is paid for. But like, you know, my, my with my mom or whatever, like, Recently, you know, she was talking about, you know, kind of complaining about, you know, my siblings or whatever, not taking her wherever she need to go. Granted, she don't make it necessarily easy for them, but, you know, she was complaining about that. So I was going to send her some money. So instead of sending her some money, I sent her a, a Uber gift card, you know what I'm saying? So that she can get around, you know what I'm saying? Like I hear her talking about, you know, she wanted to go on this trip. You know what I'm saying? With for uh they going like to see the temptations in New York or something like that. You know what I'm saying? And I said, you know what, Ma, if you want to go, I'll pay for it, but it'll be your Mother's Day present. You know what I'm saying? So you still getting the shit that you need, but you know, it's kind of like with a purpose. And I think that's where I kind of learn like like my balance and shit like that. And when I go home and shit like that, like I try to treat my siblings as much, you know, as much as I can and you know however i can but you know just really like listening but unlike you i'm not really um in a position where i'm obligated but it's kind of like on some it's the right thing to do you know what i'm saying type things for me like my dad like i don't like my dad got two you know my stepdad um he got two of his own daughters and shit but I mean, granted, I don't be asking like what they be doing, but like I don't think they be doing. This. I I know, yeah. like I said, when when shit hit the fan and them motherfuckers, is, I know one she does pretty well. You know what I mean? Like she, they're both of them college ed. Well, I know one college educated, um, but I don't know what. I don't. I ain't got. I'm not close with them clearly, <laughs> but um, yeah, you like she's somebody. Yeah, doing but I something. mean, my point, I guess, because they don't do shit. Like when my dad was going through all that, you know, like them health issues and shit that he was going through for you know, umpteen months and shit like niggas, niggas was needing eye drops and medication and shit. And like insurance yeah. was covering shit, but he also had a high yeah. deductible. So them shits be two, $300. And I'm like, shit, you know what I mean? Like they had it, but then yeah. like some other shit was, you know what I mean? Like, you know, fucking up. And, and it's crazy. Cause my dad used to make a lot of money. Like, you know what I mean? Like he used to, when I was coming up, like my, my early teens and like up, through all like my probably my early teens, like you know late adolescent early adolescent years, like he was making you know buck thirty buck twenty and shit, you know what I'm saying, making really good money to the point. But then like you know I don't think he prepared well, you know what I mean, like he didn't save right. as well as he did because uh, he then he went out you know try to do his own businesses and shit and like that. But like right. uh, his he don't have a nest egg, I'm pretty sure. And if they do, like it's kind of wild, but. um if you know whatever but i I just feel like you know some of the burden as a man you know what i'm saying like i just i've always been like and i guess i get it from him because he took care of you know a lot of people and a lot of shit you know what i'm saying as far as me and my stepsisters and my mom and you know his people and shit but like his his brothers and sisters they all pretty much did well for themselves so he didn't really have to help out with his family necessarily but he always you know what i'm saying like he all like my mom at points in her life didn't she didn't work you know what i'm saying not just because he was like, you ain't got to work if you don't want to. You know what I'm saying? Like, I make enough money. So, like, I guess I kind of, you know, saw that same thing. He was Took a provider. That on, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, he was always a hard worker and shit like that. So, like, I, I kept with that same, um, I guess, that same influence that I, you know, received from him or whatever. So, um, this is crazy how things work out because I really, if I forgot that, you know, my mom 
didn't work for a while. Um, yeah. And when she yeah. did work, all her money was hers. Like she used to just buy me shit or buy her shit or, you know what I'm saying? Buy shit for the house, all type of shit. Like she, he, she maybe paid one or two bills or some shit just on the strength because that's what she did. But like she didn't have to and she made, you know, 50, 60 grand or some shit like that. So, yeah. you know, a decent amount of money and shit. And, um, so, you know, but it's funny yeah. how things just manifest themselves in, in your life or whatever. But I mean, it is what it is. I wouldn't, I mean, I wouldn't say I wouldn't trade it because it'd be nice to have. You know, some additional help. But like <laughs> right, my mother in law, exactly. like she, she works, she does, she, she helps out when she can, you know what I mean? Like she works and she does well and she gave us some money, you know what I'm saying? Like she hit a little lick and she gave us some money and shit, you know what I mean? Just. Do you ever be prideful about taking money from outside sources? Um, slightly. Like, yeah, kind of, sort of. Not really. I mean, it just depends on where, like, cause I'm so used to not having, like, asking motherfuckers don't give me shit. Like, I, you know what I mean? Like, coming from the right. type shit in terms of, right. like, my own shit. So, it'd be weird when motherfuckers give me shit, cause I'm not used to it. Um, like, even when, like, I had baby showers and shit, like, motherfuckers was giving us mad shit, and I ain't got no big family insurance. You know what I'm saying? And so, like, I'm just, I've, I've been out here on my own, like, you know what I mean? Thugging, doing what I had to do. You know what I'm saying? Making shit shake. So, um, it is weird, you know what I mean, sometimes, but shit, same time, shit, I'll take it though. If you offering, I ain't gonna tell you no. Like, I say no once, but if you like insist, goddamn it, I'm gonna take it. Shit, I ain't, <laughs> right, I ain't beyond right. that shit, you know what I mean? I feel you on that. I feel you on that. I, you know, it's, it's hard, it's hard for me to, to, to take things from people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's very hard for me. Like, it's super hard for me. And, the, you know, and I've, um, you know, it is kind of like the one time you do it or something, like you get something from somebody. Like, I've been in situations where, you know, I've asked for some money, like, on some, I just ain't got it on me type shit. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, and then a motherfucker say something like, no, I gave it back to you, like, the next day. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? So, I, you know, I think one of, one of, one of the good things about me and the bad things about, <laughs> about me is, you know, I just don't want to put anybody in a position to say shit about me. You oh, know yeah. what I'm saying? As far as me needing them or yeah, having to do anything so with them. I never wanted to be yeah. the nigga that fell off. Do you ever, do you ever, uh, get backlash for saying no? Um, not necessarily saying no, but like motherfuckers are ass kind of like insinuate or kind of allude to like, um, like when I sold my house and shit, my fuckers was like, my, like my mom knows it's fuck, you know what I mean? Like she'll just be like, <laughs> so how much did you make or some shit like, you know what I'm saying? Or, yeah. or like kind of, like, like, nah, I'm not made? telling you how much money I made, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so okay. Able, Cause my mama will, is the type of motherfucker spending. who would definitely try to count that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, facts. but I just, just know, all right, we're going to go to the beach. I'm going to take you to the beach for your birthday. Cause I just, you know what I mean? Hit a little lick. So. You know what I mean? It's all on me type yeah. shit. Like the weekend is all on me. You know what I'm saying? And I do yeah. shit for my mom all the time. You know what I mean? Just like random or whatever. But, uh, like, but I don't, nah, she'll, she'll count the fuck out like my pocket and shit. And I don't be feeling guilty for saying no. Nah, Cause I'm like, nah, shit. Like, do you feel like parents get entitled, especially as they get older? Yeah. But see, my parents done did mad fuck shit to me. So like, I don't want to get into that. Oh, okay. That shit is like, but they done did some wild, like, for example, I'll, I'll say it. I don't give a fuck. Like motherfuckers hit the lottery one time for like 10 bands and they give me shit. You know what I'm saying? Word. Yeah. Yeah. Now nah, that is supposed to give you something. Nigga, something. At least a buck or Nigga something. Nigga hit for 10 bands and like after taxes, it's like 6,800. Cause that, like anything over 10 grand, you got to pay taxes on. So the niggas ain't give me shit. And I'm like, oh, word. That's crazy. Like, and then, Damn. like, try to minimize and shit. Like, motherfuckers done did way more grimy shit to me than that. So I be feeling, like, some type of way. But I still, like, the good-hearted nigga in me and, like, the fact that they my parents and shit, I still show love. But, like, Facts. it's yeah, not as yeah. been as – and that shit was 10, 12 years ago. You know what I mean? But I still harbor some – you know what I mean? You ain't got no choice but to. But then you think about, like, all the shit that they've done for you outside of that. Like, just grow. Exactly. But I didn't ask them for that. Like, that's the responsibility yeah. that you signed up for. So – um, yeah, but like if I would have hit for ten bands at that particular time, like I would have threw them something. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. you know, it is what it is. Motherfuckers. Is- me and my, me and my mom had a, a a a little falling out that once, like a couple years back, and it's because she asked me for something, and I asked her follow up questions, and she took offense to that. I ain't say no. I just asked follow up questions, yeah. but I guess she felt like as. A mother, she's entitled. You know what I mean? Like, you shouldn't ask me. I, I, that's why, I, that's why I don't ask you for no money. Cause of the one time I asked you a follow up question, right. 
as to why you, you know, why you needed it or whatever. But, you know, I told her, I was like, well, it don't hurt me that you don't ask me for nothing. Right. Yeah, you know I mean, like, that ain't hurting me. Right. Like, okay. what it is, you know what I'm saying? Like, that one thing, because, you know, it, it is that thing where they're so used to you. And it, and I, I am deemed the responsible one and the this and the now. I'm probably her most easygoing child. I'm probably the one that's going, you know, do the most without hesitation. So, you know, I know my siblings that said no to her ass in several, for several different things, several different ways, a million times. Right. But because she never hurt, and I didn't even say no. It's just that it, I I know what it was. The fact is, the question that I asked her was very valid. Mm -hmm. And she felt, she took that shit to heart. You know what I'm saying? So I've definitely, you know, received that like backlash a little bit, but you know, I kind of, I, I keep, I keep my money to myself. I do whatever. And I just, I just try to help out. Um, you know, we always, so these guys, they're, they're multimillionaires and they, they have issues that most people necessarily don't have to deal with. I know from the clip, I didn't necessarily see the episode and you saw the episode, you know, Meek Mill was like, you know, basically like, where does it end? Like you get your cousin some money. Then you got to get your auntie twice as much money. <laughs> right. Then you got to get somebody yeah. else yeah, that more right, money right. than that. <laughs> he said, he was like, he was like, yeah, man, you know, you remember me? He said, you know, you, you kick it with your auntie. He was like, your auntie coming to you. Like, yo, Gerard, remember I was, um, you know, you slept, he was like, nigga, I slept on your couch. Like, but he was like, I had some type of talent. You saw that I had talent. Like, it was just a couch. You know what I'm saying? Like, he was like, he was like me sleeping on your couch for two weeks doesn't, doesn't, uh, warrant you getting a fucking condominium in fucking Miami. <laughs> you know facts, what I'm saying? Like, facts. he was like, I had this talent. You saw that shit. You know what I'm saying? That's why he was like, but yeah. you didn't really give me that, that, that same gusto. And you know what I mean? That get up and go. Like, you didn't drive me to the studio or you didn't, right. you know what I'm saying? Like, you didn't, you didn't put like invest in me outside of you know sleeping right, on the couch. Oh yeah, right. he was like, yeah. So we can go get something to eat. You know what I mean? I'll do whatever for <laughs> you in that regard. But you're not getting a condo. <laughs> you definitely not yeah. getting a Lexus that you asked me for. You know what I'm saying? Just on the strength because of the fact that you know what I mean. Like he was like, you gave me yeah. You might have cheered me on once or twice, but that shit don't that that doesn't <laughs> that doesn't equal into a Lexus 350. You know what I'm saying? Look, I just see I just see situations with family members just people. Be, Black people are always very braggadocious. You know what I'm saying? Don't tell people what you got if you ain't trying to share it, my nigga. Like, don't be out here like, yo, I just got the settlement. <laughs> you know, black people always got a settlement. Yeah. And, you know what I mean? They get 50 bands or something like something crazy. With, and then niggas like, oh, yeah, they got that money. And they ain't do this for me. And they ain't do that for me. So I can only imagine what it's like like on these guys' level. Um, yeah, like me was saying, he was like, yeah, people, man, I bought, he was like, I bought somebody a Camry and shit. He's like, somebody a Camry in my family. And motherfuckers was like, all he got you was a camera. He was like, the motherfucker, oh. you ain't got no car. Like, right. you go from zero right. to a camera. You know how many motherfuckers normally just would love to have a camera? Like you, you, you can't pay the insurance on a luxury car. Yeah, you can't keep fuck? up the maintenance Nigga, like, on a luxury car. You don't have no car. Bitch, what are you talking about? Like, I just gave you, yeah. you didn't have a car, period. Or if you had a car, that shit was raggedy as fuck. Like, you go to the lot and get the same camera and pay four hundred dollars right. a month for it and be happy as a facts. pig and shit. You know what I mean? Facts, facts. So, That's facts. Yeah. We always had a conversation of like when you hit the lottery or or when you get the bag. Like you know, I'm manifesting my bag. I'm gonna be a millionaire in some way, some shape, somehow. I'm gonna just let the universe put that together for me. But even though you, don't you play know. It. I do play. Oh, you play the lottery. I don't play frequently, but when the when the jackpot oh, yeah, get big enough, sure. I play. I definitely play. Um, but you know, I, I plan on I plan on getting a bag regardless. It may not be five hundred million uh, like the lottery or some shit, but I'm get I'm gonna get my money. Um, but when you get to the point where you got known money, like your family know you have money, you become a, a millionaire or or you hit the lottery. What do you think would be your method? To not go crazy and have all your new cousins uh, and all I that have. come about. So it depends on how much I hit for. Like if I hit for five, you got five hundred million. million. You got five hundred million. million. I'm gonna allocate fifty million to be able to like disperse amongst my peoples. You know what I mean? Somehow, somehow. How? Like What's your method? Um, it, it's interesting. I don't know. I don't. I mean, like my main, my my like. Cause like I said, I ain't got no huge family and shit, so I ain't really got to worry about like a whole bunch of cousins and all that shit. Just oh, you gonna have a huge fucking family once nah, you get this five hundred million? Trust me, not, I'm, and they gonna have an bad sob stories. They tell. just lost their trailer. That's fine. I don't. I don't even know <laughs> where you fine. live. 
Um, yeah. <laughs> and you are cousins. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't know. I ain't got no cousins and shit. So, I mean, I got a few, but you know, what I mean, and one or two of them, I do something for it, to be totally honest with you. Um, but I mean, like my moms and them, like they gonna be straight. You know what I'm saying? Especially because they older now and shit. So they gonna be obviously yeah. put up. And like my my best friend, would you give a lump sum or? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, for, if I had five hundred million, hell yeah. yeah, I'm just giving them. I'm gonna buy them a house and then just giving them some some money to live off of. You know what I'm saying? Like, like what's the lump sum you think you're giving them? Uh, After you buy the like, house and shit, I probably give them like five million. Okay. Um, I mean, that's more because you know people can blow through money. Yeah, quickly. yeah. I mean, yeah, five million. Is After if they blow the five million, then what? I'm happens? Not, we sign. I'm signing releases. I work in. <laughs> That's so, why like, I want to hear. I'm, I'm trying to get releases. the logistics of this money. Yeah, no, nah, I do releases. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm doing a sign release, like. It comes with a caveat. Like, I'm giving you this money, but you're going to sign this paperwork in a release to say that I don't have to ever give you anything ever again. <laughs> I'm dead ass serious. I already, I don't mean, I work me in insurance, shit. so I'd be paying out money now. So I'm well, <laughs> well versed in releases and shit and the contractual liability and obligations and shit. So hell yeah. Word. But, um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I put it in the setup in an account, you know what I'm saying? For people and shit. And then like, you know, my, my main niggas and shit, like, you know, they gonna get they gonna get squared away, you know what I mean, taken care of and yeah. shit. Like especially if they got kids. I'm gonna help take care of their kids more than you know what I'm saying? You know, for the for like set up some you know, some trust funds for their kids, especially like yeah. my guy kids and you know, like you know, kids yeah. that are really that I've seen grow up and shit like that, that I'll take care of them. Um but if I got like five million or some shit like that, then you know, we gonna Man. we gonna parcel it yeah. out. I'm gonna I'm gonna help <laughs> right. you. Here go twenty five, maybe here thirty. You know what I'm saying? Like to help you out. I yeah. pay a bill off, or if you got some yeah. like your house or some shit, I'll help you pay some of your house off or some shit. You know what I'm saying? Or help. Like I'd ask you, like what what would you need? You know what I'm saying? Like if you if there's one thing that you require, and then I'll take inventory on that and then figure it out. Yeah, I think so. My method has always been when I've had these conversations, like for my immediate family or whatever, like I'm going to get them straight. Like they all get houses, they all get cars and you know what I'm saying? They all get, you know, my nieces, my nieces and my nephew, they straight, you know what I'm saying? They'll have a trust fund, make sure they go to college and you know, they'll have enough money where it kind of pays them, um, monthly. You know what I mean? They get like a stipend or something like monthly that automatically goes to them like a, like a paycheck or whatever. But my whole thing with family and friends is like, I'm, what, what's your dream? What do you want to do to sustain yourself? Right. You know what I'm saying? And, and invest in that. You know what I'm saying? Like you want to, you know, I always talk to my sister. You know, my sister always wanted to go to culinary art school and, you know, she wanted to have like these food trucks and, and, and things like that. So, all right, boom, go to go to culinary art school, get your business shit together, and we're going to get these food trucks up or your restaurant or, you know, whatever it is. So, you know, help uh fund your, fund your passion or how you're going to keep this shit up. You know what I'm saying? Because I'll give you the shit and I'll even give you some bread. You know what I'm saying? But niggas be nigging and they will blow through oh, yeah. some money. You know what I'm saying? So I need to put you in a position where you're going to sustain that. You know what I'm saying? Whatever money it is, you can sustain your own lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? And that's even like with my friends and shit. I've definitely like my close friends and shit. Holler at me. I definitely pay out, pay off your fucking student loans. Cause most of my friends got student loans and shit like that. Bro. And somebody just pay my student loans. I, that would take a big I fucking. I mean, I ain't paying my student loans. Y'all niggas said suck my dick. <laughs> sure. You like I don't need, I don't credit. need credit. I'm paying Fuck cash. Credit. Suck my dick. <laughs> hey, listen, I got student loans, so oh, yeah. you know that what I mean. One, like I mean, you can definitely nigga, pay my shit off. Pay pay my student loans, like just pay my student loans off, and we good. I I, I make enough money to you know what I'm saying do whatever, but you know like debt be on your back, dog. Oh, no, like gotta, debt be lingering. I gotta start paying my student loans. Uh, debt Fuck debt be shits. lingering. Um, but yeah, I definitely like fun people, fun people dreams. And I feel like that's a way for me to invest and I still be making more money. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I mean, like to get that generational wealth and shit like that. But, um, that's money, man. That's money. That's money. Um, to the people out there, you know, I, my, my, my final tips, uh, for money and, and taking care of your family is don't let them motherfuckers stress you out. Definitely help where you can and how you can. Um, and, you know, make sure you're taking care of people's needs. And, you know what I'm saying? Like, actually in reverse, I'd rather you take care of your needs. I'll help out with your wants. 
that's better because right. that means you you responsible yeah you know what i'm saying any final tips for people with uh being financially responsible for family um just go with your heart man you know what i mean just go with your heart i can't you know i mean each situation is different people you know people's relationships with their families are different mine is a little uh a little hairy at times, just based off things, but yeah. I mean, it's gotten better. Uh, but yeah. I mean, some people are super duper fucking close to their family to the point where their family, you know, bend over backwards for them. So, you know, obviously it's good to reciprocate if you can. Um, so I just kind of, you know, just use your heart and use your gut and your intuition and shit and make a good decision. And that's what's up. I want to thank y'all for listening. Make sure you subscribe to the show. And y'all know the deal. Follow us at the Ain't Shit Show. That's the X where the I will be. And we're on Twitter, IG, Facebook. You can listen on YouTube, Spotify, All Heart Radio, Google Play, Stitcher Radio, Apple Podcasts, wherever you listen to podcasts. Check us out and tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend. Um, and, uh, like I said, next week we'll have, uh, Tam on the show of Lynn Therapy. She's a certified therapist and we'll talk about like sexual abuse and misconduct and all these docs that are coming out, the Leaving Neverland, the Abducted in Plain Sight, the R. Kelly doc, uh, all that good stuff. And uh as y'all know, we like to um end the show with a quote. And today the quote is simple. If you stressed out don't worry about it. Weed. Just put on some. <laughs> you can put that in there too. I was gonna say, put on some trap music and handle the shit. Yeah, and smoke some weed too. Smoke some That's weed. Yeah. <laughs> and till next time, and know I want that y'all Martin to be great. Is better than fucking Fresh Prince. They're both great, but definitely Martin is the shit. Until yes, next time, y'all be great. We'll come to forever, baby. We'll out.